So Paul Ansel has put the house up for sale. Its guide price is for a reasonable £465,000. I think that's quite a reasonable price. I don't know about prices across the country. I'm not an expert in this, but I think it's a reasonable amount of money. Not asking for extremely high values, not holding out for like some excessive, strange high amount. Quite a reasonable amount of money. Um, it's four bedrooms detached, two bathrooms, freehold. There's the floor plan, there's the photographs. Described, and I think this is important because this would be the description that it was sold to Nicola on essentially this would be the life that Nicola was moving into when and that Paul and Nicola would you know this would would be the life that they were moving to now he's leaving it behind um are you dreaming of moving out of the city but want to retain your modern style of living then consider this well-appointed home central to the design of this contemporary home is the kitchen family dining room with a breakfast bar you always dreamed of ideal for entertaining this opens to a utility which has a back door, ideal for coming in after making the most of outdoor pursuits that the village has to offer. As the village is surrounded by farmland, there are lots of local producers who will deliver to your door, which for busy working families is as close as it gets to living the good life. Inskip is the perfect location as the motorway, Preston City Centre and other villages such as Great Eccleston are just a short drive away. The village also has fibre internet which will appeal to people who work from home. This fantastic four bedroom, two bathroom, detached family home is situated on a private road. To the ground floor is a spacious dual aspect lounge with French doors. There's a second reception room, added convenience of well-appointed toilet, wash basin, etc, etc. The village of Inskip is surrounded by beautiful countryside with lots of amenities available in the numerous villages close by. There are good transport links to Preston, Lancaster and Fly File. Filed, filed, I'm fucking it up. Filed coast. I don't know. I've never said that word before. Filed coast. The house is conveniently located for the local primary school, and there is also a preschool close by. So, um, without going into detail on each room, which we're going to look at in just a minute, um, you can see that it's sold as this picturesque family life, surrounded by countryside, close to school and small towns, other villages but you get privacy and space to live this idyllic family life, yeah? That's the, the selling point of this house. So I, I can see why Nicola, with her young family, Paul Ansel, moved there and what appealed to Nicola about it. Um, I can also, in some ways, see what appealed to Paul about it as well. We're going to get a, an insight now. Now, listen, I'm going to do a joke here. It is price to sell. It is a very reasonable price, I thought, yes. Um, I'm going to do a joke here, but you just have to accept it. I like doing jokes, but I find this very difficult. So in order for me to get through it, I did a joke in my brain and I still want to do it, but um, I'm going to do it and you're just going to have to think this is inappropriate. I can't believe he's done this. I hate him. Or you can understand that I just, anyway, I might edit this out. Who died in a house like this? All right, I'm going to have to edit that out. <laughs> You can't say that. I know. It's a joke about through the keyhole, but you've turned it into it. I know. They won't even know what through the keyhole is. What? Some of them won't have even heard of through the keyhole. You give them far too little credit. They know what through the keyhole is. They... Do you want them to do a poll? Shall I do a poll? Who lives in a house like this? Yeah, lives. Well, Paul Ansel does. Yeah. What are you saying? Oh, it's a joke. These things are very difficult. Right. Who, look, you know what I'm doing anyway. This is the house. And this is the, fuck, I can't believe I did the joke. This is the house. So what's drawing my attention, and I will take you through each frame, and I will tell you what draws my attention, and, you know, this is what people get from me. And then there's a virtual tour, and I'm going to take you on the virtual tour because I'm going to um, describe the morning of Nicola's disappearance, murder, tragic death, whatever. Um, I'm going to describe that through the prism of following their virtual tour. So this is the front of the house. It's quite kind of closed off, like with all the bushes and stuff. What we saw on the CCTV is Nicola came out the side door at the back on the, that given day. I don't know if that's regular. I don't know if the front door is used a lot, but you can see that it looks almost like there's an almost cut through here. But in the main, you're going to be driving up this private road. And when they said private road, they mean it. 
Look, it's bricks and it's not just like you're on the street. Like you turn into the private road, the estate of whatever, you know, and you're on there. It's quite quiet, quite secluded up now in your little driveway. There's detached, but other houses nearby, but detached. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? You hear the vibe I'm giving you. Like, it, you know, so you drive up here into your parking space and then they go in the back door. We'll look at that a bit closer when we look at the virtual tour, but they don't appear to use the front door from the images we've seen on a regular. Um, and this space here in front of the house is obviously kept clear for other people to access their other houses. But you would think maybe sometimes people might want to park up in front of your house and just walk into the front door. So this appears, I might be wrong here, but this appears to be a bit of a desire line where people cut through the bushes maybe, when they don't know and they just arrive for the first time. Maybe that would have been better designed with an actual path there. But it seems like it's designed to push you around to the side. So they do use the side, the um, the driveway, and then they enter in through the back a lot. Um, Paul has undoubtedly been round and cleaned the entire place for these images. Like These images are not just like random pictures from Nikki's home. No, completely. Um, I'll also draw your attention to something else that I spot here, which is there's a uh, 2015 marker stone built into the top. And I don't know how common that is in buildings to, to put the date on the stone, but it's almost a uh, kind of... Um, like subconsciously, I see it as a sort of elevated status, almost regal sort of impressive i know it says 2015 or whatever and it's not like you know 1804 but like a man's home is his castle isn't it and when you arrive at this house and you see the tall shape of the actual subconsciously that looks like a house because it's that house shape like kids draw with the roof and the and it's got the 1800 thing and or nine 2015 thing and it's got a big front door and I, it, it's quite a statuesque um, I don't know if I'm using the right word, but it's quite an impressive property when you pull up at it. It looks like a big house with a big, and it's got the front door and the arch over it and the separate garage. And, you know, it, it, it's quite an impressive property, isn't it, in that way? Um, and we know from village life, of, lots of people know from their own village life, from just normal life in humanity, and also from a vibe that we get from some of Nikki's social media and stuff that, you know, keeping places looking good, keeping up with the appearances the joneses whatever you want to say you know having public appearance like this is good of your house in a way i don't know if i'm getting my words out properly but it seems to be you know seems to be interesting doesn't it for that reason um it was the show house says jamie so you know maybe this is another you know thumb up or thumbs down i don't know about buying houses whether you want the show house or not but i'm saying from my impressions of it from these pictures that it ticks that box of being satisfactorily um, socially status proud of your nice house or something yeah not that there's anything particularly bad or good about it it's just a thing I think and I think that stone like sort of says that to me and the build and the shape and anyway next picture we're closer in on the front door so we can see the front door's got pumpkins and a wreath I mean Wreaths are associated with death, obviously Halloween wreath. I don't know if Paul's added that just for the sale so to help the house look. Uh, you know, when you're trying to sell a house, you do certain things like bake bread when people come round or put a nice thing on the front door that makes it look more inviting. I don't know if that's something the kids have been up to. Um, there's pumpkins outside, but it does tell us that this photograph was taken in October and not mid-November, which is when the house has gone on sale. I mean, I don't know exactly when the house went on sale, so maybe it did go on in October, you know, don't quote me on that, but it just shows us that when this, you know, it dates the photograph, doesn't it? So that's interesting to me that there's some something there that can clearly date the photograph. Uh, and I don't read much all else into the, you know, front image. I do wonder how often the front door is used. That's something that's, you know, come up in my brain. So we're just going to go through the images. Like I said, we're just going to be going through it. Um, before we do actually move on to the next one, I'll just check you in chat. Um, Yeah, you had one in a house you built in 2007, that stone. Yeah, my dad's built houses and like, I've seen it done. Like, um, It's not an uncommon thing and I don't think it's a bad thing. It's like I say, when you pull up to this house and you're considering whether you're going to buy it, I think if you're Paul Ansel, I'm, I'm getting into the mind of Paul Ansel and Nicola Bully as they pull up to this house and see it for the first time, uh, what their feelings are on their new life here. And, you know, for Nicola Bully, I don't know if it was the first time she moved 
out of her locale area you know i don't know enough about her history in that way but i'm just imagining pulling up to this and saying wow it looks quite impressive look with the stone and the the eaves and you know you know what i'm saying like it gives it a little bit of a touch doesn't it which is quite nice so i'm not i'm not against it i'm not judging it i'm just saying like um it's it gives me that feeling anyway yeah um this is interior lounge room assuming a room that you would spend a lot of time in as a family it looks like the cozy one doesn't it it looks a lot like because i'm going to say i'm going to say paul has not um drastically changed the interior design in between nicola's death and selling the house that's a guess i'm thinking he's not gone for like a new fireplace and chosen that like you might have tidied up in here removed some stuff you might have added a lamp like or a couple of things of flowers like the estate agent has probably been round and said you know do xyz he's probably looked on the internet like people do everyone knows that there's a few things you do to smarten the place up you know he's going to tidy up the cushions and you know what i'm saying but i'm saying he's probably not said right nicola's gone let's get rid of the furniture like it's time to get a new carpet like it looks like this is as they lived in it my guess oh you know give it that credit i'd say um, and we've got the animal bed the pet bed still here so that screams out to me at the moment is that in there as oh this is cozy this is you know put a dog bed in or is the dog still with the family now is we like you know back in the family unit um in october at this point because a lot of questions were asked about who was looking after willow and stuff um dog bed is something that stands out to me here otherwise it looks like nicola would have enjoyed like it looks like a um like there's a lot of care gone into the interior design it's not just like we painted it white we've like chucked in a little fire and a telly like you know there's a lot of style and flair and care you know someone um, wanted that little touch of luxury and um, comfort in their special space and was really proud of and excited by their new home. Like, who lives in a house like this? You know, I remember doing that a bit. Um, you can feel that vibe here. It's, you know, a bit of luxury. There's the gold and the bronze and whatever. You know, I'm not a great... I'm not Lawrence Welling Bowen, but that's my vibe from here. The telly on the wall, yeah, it looks bad now, but when you turn it on and it's going, people like looking at it. Um, I, I would guess this is where Nicola came to come and watch the television and be cosy and the girls might have been in and out but Paul probably doesn't view this room as his um, own safe haven in the same way you know this is Nicola's lounge I'm going to call it do you know what I'm saying that's my vibe from here so this is like Nicola's created herself and you know we're talking about things this is Nicola's created herself her own little cosy safe space yeah is there anything else I can draw mentally, you know, subconscious signals out of it? Maybe, maybe not, because, um, you know, there's not much to draw from. We've got a big mirror, like a dresser over there in the corner. Um, maybe at a later date, I might want to dig into the psychology of the uh, interior design, because I haven't really thought carefully about psychology of interior design much. And I'm not talking about feng shui, you know, I'm talking about deeper things. And we don't know how much of this is contrived and changed. But my guess is it's basically as Nicola used to have it. Um, I wonder if that's a picture of Paul and Nicola on there. On that. Like, you know, I wonder how much this room is now used now that Nicola's not here. Um, and whether Paul sits here and thinks of Nicola or if he doesn't want to be in there and this is like Nicola's room, leave it as it's used to keep it. You know, when someone dies, people say like, um, leave it as they used to have it and don't don't mess with it. You know, I wonder if he's popped a little picture of the two of them there and that's like a little, it's almost shrine-esque, isn't it? A little, in a little way. It's almost like shrine-esque, but not completely. And I'm not going to go too deep into that. Not in the way that Madeline McCann's mother had a shrine next to her bed with like all religious stuff on it. Um, this is the same same room viewed from a different angle and you can see these lovely big windows at the back you could exit the room here and leave to go to school in the morning but you're not going to be coming through here with your muddy shoes and like all your school stuff are you through mommy's lounge in the morning so my guess is those curtains are not used those doors are not used in the morning so we're looking at a different door for exiting out the back in the morning which is how nicola left on that fateful morning according to the cctv but again everything else in here sits nicely doesn't it um a view through to paul's man cave which we'll look at in a minute but everything else 
you know, seems fine. The carpet does not seem... Like, this is going to be interesting, and I don't know if I'm, you know, tripping here, but my mom had green carpets when I was growing up, and she had them fitted in the hallway and in her lounge and you know like places and i could not cut a break with these cream carpets why in the cream carpets watch the cream carpets <laughs> like you know at one point we spilled stuff like over the years me and my sister between us spilled some quite bad things on those cream carpets but also so did my mom at one point i suppose everyone did because the bloody cream carpets you can't avoid it um so my question here is family life the cream carpets is this mommy special lounge keep out careful of the cream carpets i understand the christmas tree was put up in this room um is it we don't care has there been any wine spillage um if nicola was and i don't want to go too dark into this but if nicola was you know imbalanced heavy drinking is it that you might see more stains on the floor um we assuming that paul's carefully cleaned this before putting it up for sale but it does seem immaculate to me it doesn't look all stained and rubbish um and like someone's been having parties and knocking things over and the dog even dog's bed you know where's the if my dog was having a dog bed in this room there'd be all muddy footprints and <laughs> the fucking thing um so i don't know if we can read too much into it but it's just a thing that i pick up you know the cream carpets would i would assume she would be quite precious over the cream carpets like my mom was um bless and there's that image of that picture i can't really see it very well and to blow it up for you, um, it's going to become like pixels, I think. But uh, it does look like a picture of a couple. Like, I don't know how contrived this is going to be. You know, I don't know if Paul lives in this room like this, if this is just for the show. Because he knows these pictures are going on the internet. You know, but it looks like Nicola holding a child and Paul with his arm around her or something, maybe. Um, and something written there with the yellow. Yawn, yawn, yawn. Yeah, it was obs. It's obs. Just had to change the stream key, um, which is strange. But yeah, we're, we're on, aren't we? We're rolling. You can hear me, aren't you? We're all still going. Let me just do my stream manager. Yeah, we're still rolling, yeah. Um, actually, I feel like this is going really well as a stream. I feel like I'm in a good vibe and um, I'm handling this okay. So I think this will end up on YouTube. Like, I hope you agree. Um, it is what it is, isn't it? It's difficult, this is, though. It's difficult. Um, yeah, sorry about it. My broadcast software had a little glitch, and now we're back. Um, this is the image of the picture that's just on the dresser there. So obviously that picture is photographed by the person who's photographing that. They know it's there. Like, it's almost like deliberately contrived for it to be in shot. Okay, then Paul knows these images are going out on the internet. Um, just quickly in chat, just tell me if like, I'm back and you can hear me. Um, I'll just put it in chat as well, that, like, just in case people um, want to, needed to reload or something. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so this image is quite difficult to see. It's little pixels, etc., etc. But it looks like, to me, it's Paul Ansel, Nicola, and maybe holding a child, um, you know, family. And it looks like in yellow ribbon, it looks like it might say, and I'm not saying it does, but something like NB and then the date that she was born and the day she died. Like, it's like a memorial on a yellow ribbon. Um, and a black and white photograph of like, you know, that was our life, it is over. Um, and clearly, it's been put there in the image. Like like I said before, it looked a little bit like a little shrine. Let's zoom this back down. Uh, clearly, it's been put there in the image, in my opinion. Like... like uh, how do I say this? I think Paul knows that this is going to go on the internet. Like, of course he does. He's taking these photographs for the internet. And he knows what the internet's like, and people are going up looking at these. So he's had his choice over this. Um, and whether it's always been there and he's decided to leave it there, or it's never been there and he put it there, it's there now. On the same token, we've got these... Like, this is just... I'm telling you things that I'm seeing, yeah? We've got these flowers, and we've got this sort of oak wood dresser 
and the, the yellow ribbon and stuff. And it's very evocative of the room that he was in when he did his interview and the, um, the flowers behind him. It's very evocative of that. Thanks very much. Three, two, one, skip. You know, there's the wood dresser, there's the flowers, the rose. It's white here, but um, it's very evocative of that, isn't it, in my opinion. I would say. Just the the flat, the combination of those flowers on the, the dresser, sorry, on the, the fireplace there, and this oak dresser with the, the picture of Nicola now and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of evocative of that. I don't see he's going to go and get a brand new mirror and a big thing like that. Maybe the clock is an addition, you know, a present, a gift or something. Um, but other than that, I think, you know, this is the way Nicola would have left the room, yeah. Maybe. Agree? I could disagree. I don't know. Have your thoughts in chat. I'll move on to the next image. There's 30 of them, so I need to move at some pace, don't I? If I consider now anything else from now on, I'm going to say... It's all good unless I do something bad and make a problem and clap my hands and say, I've got to edit that out. <laughs> to save myself the difficulty. Maybe I'll just leave it all in, including that bad joke. I don't know. This is an image of apparently a different room. Are we in now? All right, so there's a floor plan and everything, so we can see. But this appears to be a strange little room, doesn't it? With a sofa, some double doors out the back. The dresser, the lamp, it's like a little second like extra room. We'll look at that again. And I don't see much in this. I feel like this room is not used. <laughs> I feel like this is a strange room that's not often used. It's like an extra little sofa room, like the reading room. Um, and I can't glean anything really from it. It's a strange arrangement of furniture. Uh, this is going into the kitchen diner. If you were going through the front door, we'll look at the virtual tour in a minute. Through the front door in kitchen diner. And this would be the room that was lived in most, that was used the most. In the mornings, the kids would be coming through here, the dog would be going out the back. This might be the double doors that are used when you leave the house. Uh, obviously, kitchen stuff, breakfast, messing about. Um, this is a practical space, isn't it? And clearly, it's all been completely cleared and tidied up. There is a dog bed on the floor. And there's another little, what I'd call a shrine almost. Here again, starting to feel a bit shiny, -y, a little bit. It's just a little dresser table with a photograph and some flowers on again, but it's just got that little feeling of it. And again, very neat, tidy. It will be because it's photographs for um, for this uh, purpose. Something I will, you know, what I'm seeing and what I want to say about it. Um, It is a big clock, isn't it? There are some quite interesting statements. Like Nicola, I think, like, Paul Ansel has not gone out and bought the big clock with the mirror and the table, but Nicola's gone out and bought some stuff and furnished the house in a very, very nice... Uh, like, she's got an eye for design and style, and it looks good. It is seemingly quite expensive. Like, I know if you go out and buy a clock, the big, great big one that's the mirror, like, it's quite expensive. But once you've bought it and put it on the wall, it's there then, isn't it? So, um, And these sofas and stuff like that, you know... We're not skimping on the furnishings, but then again, I don't know. I don't furnish houses, so maybe you can get these dresser tables quite cheap at like uh, B and M and spray them up gold or something, you know. But it looks to me like it's quite well done out, like you know, it's really nicely done. So, you know, kudos on that, I suppose. Um, it does look like a showroom. I, apparently, it was the show house, and Nicola kept it really tidy. But also Paul is selling it and it's probably had like people in like estate agents and stuff to go over it properly as well. Especially considering there's the, you know, the estate agents and everyone will know that this is the house that Nicola Bully used to live in. So there's a bit of a thing, a stigma and a, you know, a conversation that people will have. So they're going to go over these images and just, you know, make sure they look just like empty house, aren't they? They're not going to want it to like scream of the Nicola Bully case at all. Um, but I don't know if to the point where they've changed the art on the wall. Maybe not. Maybe so, maybe not. You know, that's probably always been there. Uh, and the clock and stuff, you know, I, I don't think Paul's gone out and bought a brand new big clock. But 
the one thing I wanted to raise my, uh, I don't know, attention of here or opinion is that you've got those cozy rooms and the, the lounges, but when you're having like stress and problems and arguments, you know, the police came round, didn't they? And did the, the, the check and stuff. Um, I need to go across these images and this thing and line them up with certain events like the police check as well. We're going to do the events of the day, hopefully today, if I can get through all this as well. But yeah, the police check, you know, do they come into this room through the hallway into the kitchen area where we've got a sofa and do you want to get a drink and, you know, put your coat down and, uh, or do you go into the little cosy, or do you go upstairs? I think this is the lived in room, the, the more natural flow to the house is to come in here. And if you're having loud discussions and arguments, then they are going to wreck echo and um, resonate around this big ceiling. Like voices are going to, I, I get the feeling this is a place that when it's full of life and laughter and, and you know, those those sounds echo around and that's great. But when you're having a row and, you know, one's on one side of the kitchen counter and one's on the other, um, you know, it can feel like a bit of a noisy space as well, maybe. Um, that's my feel on that. This is the view from the kitchen to the, the diner area. They've got a nice big oak table, candle. Again... Paul's not going to have gone out and bought a great big oak table before he sells the house, is it? This is how they were living. Um, and it, it again reminds me of uh, my own mom in a way because um, my mom used to have like this lovely... I mean, we've got it now and we use it, but we used to have like a lovely table that was nice and then we'd have this other table that we could actually sit at and eat. <laughs> like my guess is the kids sit up over here to this counter top and make a mess and sometimes we all sit around the big table but like... Mom doesn't want you doing your crayons on the oak or the you know the nice chairs get, don't want tomato sauce on them, do they? It's just a funny thing that maybe I'm wrong, um, but it looks like certain things are made for um, Nikki's like you know Nikki's put things in that are very nice, and then the family life. I mean, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but like, this is what happens in families and life um, goes on. It's slightly next to it, but please don't make a mess of it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's just a thing I think anyway. The kitchen itself, clean, neat, tidy, absolutely removed of any personality. So there's nothing really to glean from this, I guess. It shows a flow through to the um, out, out the back area. Um, this is the kitchen in a, a wide shot. So like I say, you've got that space to have people on one side, people on the other. Um, I like the, the the flow of a kitchen like this where you can cook and serve and, you know, people can stay out your way in the kitchen but still be sort of part of being in the room and stuff. And, um, you know, it feels like this would be a, a Nicola-based space where she would be in control of this area, so to speak. And, like, looking at that table and stuff. Again, so we've got the entering the house, doesn't matter which direction you go in, it feels like Nicola has, like, space and certain elements of control here, um, whether it's a little lounge or this way into here. Um, yeah, it's a nice looking kitchen, yeah. This is out the little house out the back. And so this is my next question is, is this how we leave the house in the morning? Which doors, because there's a patio doors there that leads to a um, one of those lazy spa things or a hot tub thing. So that might not be where you go out in the morning, but you might have your breakfast in the morning here, you know, school bags and stuff. Where are they putting their shoes on and leaving the house? And why is Nicola going out the side door and not the front door? Is the front door generally used is a question I have. And I think it's probably answered with this, isn't it? This is probably where in the morning you put your shoes on, um, take them off when you come in, utilise this door with its more straightforward locking system, um, utility room out the house. So this, my guess, is the last room that Nicola went through and, and left, according to the CCTV. Uh and would have contained, again, it's very sparse and there's nothing in it now. There's only like a few, strangely, seemingly party-based. Is that gold spray and party pop? I don't know what it is, you know. Um, there's not many items here. There's this Star of the Week thing on the stuck on the thing. I assume that's kids. Uh, I don't want to go too deeply into the kids' life, but I assume that's um, kids' school. You know, there's a calendar... There's Star of the Week things. I don't know what this stuff is down here. Looks like loads of keys. There's like some sort of box thing that contains stuff. 
and it looks like gold spray or like silly string spray like neon glow stick oh, okay okay so i think one of the things is glow sticks for the dog the at nighttime walks you put it around the dog's neck maybe i might be tripping um this seems like someone's washed up a dog bowl so the dog gets fed out here this is like a doggy you know dog room um the calendars here as well though isn't it like so again a nicola space where she was organizing and like if this is where the calendar always lived and where the dog always got fed and you know what i'm saying like a, like a nicola space where things are organized and you know who lives in a house like this um so probably the last space before she leaves the house organization checks bags school maybe that you know maybe that we're going to look at the garage and the glass doors in a minute yeah, we're going to move through this is the children's play area i'm not going to spend a lot of time looking at that um this is a small bathroom again i'm not going to spend a lot of time looking at it although it's possible that in marital disputes someone locks himself in a small bathroom while they have a little bit of an upset i don't think there's anything to glean from this really i uh, this is the hallway and again like you come in the house and you use it but like it's got a nice table and some stuff but i don't know what we want to gain from this really other than the upstairs system and the way sound travels um We'll be looking at the route Nicola would have taken. Like this is in the morning. Nicola's in over to our right is the kitchen. Over to here is the kitchen. So in the morning, you know, the kids in the kitchen and all that going on. Paul's upstairs in bed, up these stairs. You know. I mean maybe we come back and look at this another time, but there it is as an image, so it's there anyway. Um The same thing, another angle. And this is where I don't think they use this as a door. You know, it looks just unlived. Oh, poor doggies. I'm sorry about that. If you've got a lot of dogs, they all get sick together then. Actually, I've got to keep on, got to keep on topic. Um, it looks to me here like the door is... Um, you know, there's no mat. There's no big door mat. And there's not lots of footmarks and shoes everywhere. And whilst you could just put all that away for the photo... You know, it just feels like unlived, doesn't it? It feels like they do use the back door. And this is the main door. For when, like, you know, friends and family and the postman come round. I imagine what, I wonder what the postman does, actually. I wonder what the postman does. Um, clean, neat, the hallway. Master bedroom with featuring Paul Ansel's leg here. In the bottom left, reflected in a dressing table. Uh, we're in Nicola's space again, aren't we? Look at the colour scheme. Look at the uh, the decor. Like not strongly, but Nicola's space, the colour scheme, the decor, uh, the lamps. It, what stands out to me here is that this this placement. I mean, he might have moved this. This might be different. Who knows? But the placement of the bed is not even, and that's to give extra access to this side so you can get in the wardrobes and stuff. I understand that. But it's not even. One of you feels cutched off to the side, squashed into the corner. And the other one feels they've got more space. And, you know, I don't know if I'm doing feng shui here or just telling you how I feel. But one of you feels you've got more space. I don't know whose side is whose in principle. But my guess is it's Nicola that's squashed off in the corner, little Nicky. And it's Paul that's got the more space. But it could be that Nicola has, you know, the wardrobes on her side, the big mirrors. This is where she gets ready like maybe she's using this space more than Paul. Um, I don't know the situation, do I? But you know that's to be thought about in some way. Maybe if you want to think about it, I don't know. But it looks like he's still sleeping in this room. The bed looks like it's been made, but someone sat on it at least, or like maybe the dog's been on it. But it looks like someone uses the room. We'd probably say. Um, Same room, little dressing table. Am I to assume this isn't the master bedroom now? I mean, am I confused? Because it's got like, this pink pig thing on it. Like, does Paul sleep in this bedroom with this pink pig thing on it, on this desk here that has like the hat boxes and the telly? Everything here I could see is Nicola's doing. So maybe he just hasn't got rid of it. I'm confused by the pink pig thing. What 
you know, what purpose and to what design and what is the pink pig thing? Because uh, I assumed, like, you know, I think it's quite an easy assumption to make that this would be the room they both slept in, and maybe this is the spare room. Um, we'll go through the rooms, so, I, you know, it will stand out if I'm wrong. Pink pig thing, anyway. That's there. Bathroom, little ensuite, I guess. And uh, not much to say from it, except it's all Paul's items here now. Like, it may have all been Nicola's items before, but this makes it feels like Paul's got his own, like, Paul's bathroom. But then he's the one living there. I don't know, it just feels like a bit more of a clinical masculine. Like, it hasn't got any of that Nicola flair in this room. Um, but it has got a shower, some products here that are pink. These photographs will have all been taken in October. Um, my guess was they were male grooming products there because they're in blues and greens. But I go, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Don't hold me to that. It might not be hair, hair putty. Maybe the girls use that shower. So they've got their hair shampoo. It looks like men's stuff on the left, women's stuff on the right there on the bottom of the floor with the shampoo. But of course, like, I'm not reading into Paul's personal life here. I'm, I just know that Nicola's shampoo is not going to be left in the shower on her side for months and months. I mean, is it? That's not happening. So somebody else has got the pink shower going on. I feel unlike... I, I, I think it's a guess that Paul is not using... Uh, that shampoo will be colour-treated shampoo, I think, my guess is. Just knowing stuff about hairdressing. It looks like some kind of brand and their colour-safe shampoo. So maybe Paul is using colour-safe shampoo. Maybe that's it. Um... And maybe he's really uh, <laughs> sentimental about Nicola's old shampoo bottle. But it's there. It's a thing that stands out to me. This little ensuite bathroom connected to the master bedroom. Hallway upstairs. Again, big open space. Lovely. Um, but what you will clearly notice, won't you? And tell me in chat while I quickly... Um, you know, Tell me what stands out for you here in chat while I just make my little chiffer. Um... Photos were taken in November, judging by the calendar in the utility room. Good call, Jamie. Um, and, yeah, there was the pumpkins outside as well. So I was saying late October. Oh, yeah, of course, early November, isn't it? Because you don't put the pumpkins out and uh, you put them out at Halloween at the end of the month, don't you? So, yeah, it's covering that little time span. Um, it, Jamie's got it right. Big up Stover and Dolly's mum. Strange blinds there. They're proper blackout blinds there, aren't they? For not having people looking in, which is a choice. Um, maybe they, you know, if you've got to spend money on your home furnishings, maybe this is the space that you don't want to spend as much money on because it's just like some blinds. Um, so maybe they're cheaper. Uh, but yeah, it's this yellow ribbon that absolutely screams, what the fuck, isn't it? Because I don't know how comforting or whatever, I don't know when the yellow ribbon went on, it's not been removed, and it's a symbol of Nicola Bully and her status as missing person. And yellow ribbons are used... Um, when someone is missing, like tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree, you know, it's used to symbolize someone's missing and you hope to get them home. Um, but it's less common to see them. So, they're like, you know, now that someone, once someone has been confirmed dead, the, the yellow ribbon is not such a prudent or um, it's not such a pertinent symbol. But they've been living with it then, yeah? Like tied to the banister like that. I'm assuming Paul sees that, takes the photo. I'm assuming that estate agents might have taken the photos even. But, you know, the house has been dressed like this. Is it a choice, a contrivance by the estate agents to say, hey, you know, let's just put a little nod to Nicola in. Is it something that's been there the whole time? Um, is it something that Paul said, should we, should we remove this? You know, has there been a conversation about it? And it's very interesting to me as well to note that the art in the background, the sports car is fine. We can see that. But whatever that is, we can't. So is there personal art on the walls that I've been missing that have been blurred out that are personal? And if so, do they just blur them out? And why not the sports car? <laughs> is that not personal? And who's putting up an impersonal picture of a sports car and a very personal picture that we need to blur out? But that's all I can really glean from that. Clearly, the ribbon is still attached atop the banister. There every morning, there every evening. Uh, interesting choice. Child's bedroom. I'm not going to... 
alight on this. Child's bedroom, I'm not going to alight on this. Um, bathroom. Now this to me looks more like a usable family bathroom. It's got a bath. Um, it's got a thing that says something naked. Get naked on the wall, which is a bit strange to me. Get naked, but you do get naked to go in the shower. But a bit strange for a family bathroom, maybe. Or maybe it's a joke they have, like a family joke. Um, a little bit anyway, strange. And then there's this other strangeness, which is like essential oils by the bath or something. And like looking again in more masculine style bottles. I don't know enough about it. Is this guest room, bathroom? Is this somebody likes to have a soak in the bath? Um, there seems to be like toothbrushes and creams on here. So um, I would have thought this would be like the bathroom that the younger girls use. But again, not, nothing in this shower, no bottles and this strange array of bottles on the, the bath. And they get naked on the wall. A strange bathroom to me. Same room, different angle. No indication of whose bathroom it is regularly used as, but there are some creams and stuff on the side and maybe toothpaste. Um, this one gives me strange vibes, this bathroom. <sighs> Hang on. Yeah, this one gives me strange vibes, this bathroom. I might, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say that. I'm going to leave that there. And, like... I'm just going to say that because this is Paul's office. So, say, like, I, I, you know, this is Paul's office. <laughs> it's got those reflective round window, windows, mirrors that were a feature of the GoFundMe campaign photographs. They, t they faked the GoFundMe campaign photographs. And they had those round mirrors, and you sure saw Paul Ansel and not the family in the in the round mirrors. Do you remember? Um, so we've got like it's. A st it, I'm going to go through it, you know, bit by bit, and just talk about what I see. So it's a strange interior design choice, those mirrors, isn't it? What it means is, if you're sat at that computer. You can see behind you, like, wing mirrors. <laughs> like, but not in a normal... I've got a mirror over there, like, you know, I can see in it. Like, but in a sort of strange... Like, is it done as a design choice, as a cool design choice? It's just a fucking... Str I don't see mirrors like that in people's houses, in general. And they've got several in their house. Someone likes them, and it's Paul. Because he's put them all up on his wall. There are three of them. Uh, below this, you've got, of course, the computer set up, the desk... People's desks get messy. This is complete abandonment of Nicola's um, interior design choices now again. Like, this is Paul's office, isn't it? You can tell. There's none of that Nicola bully design classics. The desk is one of those. It's a bit of an oak desk with a nice... Like, it would originally have been a nice Nicola bully style room. But the black sideboard and the barber shoe boxes, um, random other furnishing it's, it's gone a bit weird and it's gone a bit messy and it's not Nicola's room at all now yeah definitely Paul's room um, he's going to have tidied this up and contrived it cause to take photos of it isn't he he's not going to leave like a legal document out or a you know I done a murder on the photocopier um, but what we what we can see is there's a few trinkets atop here that's like I'm a family man here in my little you know family trinkets from my photographs and my holidays that I always keep up there you know in pictures of my family this I assume is a family picture um, the books you know the books so to speak the the forms and the important work that i do uh, laptop computer not a desktop computer not a big computer is it possible the main computer used to sit somewhere else and isn't here anymore or has he always been using this this little laptop for the whole shebang um reasonable monitor i'm looking at a reasonable monitor to watch this in that's a reasonable monitor size there and mouse map ergonomic thing someone spends a lot of time you know who lives in a house like this someone spends a lot of time here they brought their nice chair that they want and they spend a lot of time i'm i'm thinking this isn't the always the computer like it seems weird that you'd have just a small laptop maybe you do all of your work on the small laptop and it's great but it feels like you've got all this space in this kit and you've gone for a small small laptop when you could have had slightly bigger permanent office home office kit and a mobile laptop in in and out as well like um bit of a strange choice to me that uh yeah the picture on the wall is blurred isn't it this must be from family reasons it must be family pictures 
because otherwise why would you blur them um but you've got untidy wires everyone has them um this desk thing it's got a lock on it this cabinet here's got a lock on it like it doesn't sit with the color scheme of the room and its purpose is to make sure that it's got things locked away i might be wrong you know people might critique this and say oh you said it was a lock and it's just a sticker or, i don't know this is what my theme feelings are yeah just off the cuff it's got a lock on it and it's different from the furnishings in the room so paul's brought it in because it's his thing that he locks his things in you know he's bought a locking cabinet that he wants for the lock more than the aesthetics and it's got a great big i assume this is like a photocopy or printer thing not many people do even if you work from home not many people go the whole hog of the big printer thing so maybe it's certain documents or design things i don't know i don't know how often it gets used i'm not an expert on what that is but it's an interesting item within the room and it brings me round fully round to what I think is the main item. I haven't mentioned the Barber boxes much. Barber's an expensive brand of Wellingtons, like or whatever shoes or whatever the fuck those boxes are. Country set, country sort. Maybe you got something for Christmas and you kept the box because it's a nice box from Barber. You know, it shows this... Um, I'm not saying people who like designer brands are elitists or whatever, but I'm just saying, you know, it shows that wanting to keep up with the Joneses, a sense of social elitism, nice things, nice brands, uh, countryside, wax jacket, barber, wellies, woods, you know, uh, it shows a, a certain sense of, even if the rest of the room hasn't been well coordinated, you know, it shows a sense of, I've kept the not, the box from the nice box. Of, it's not just any old shoe boxes. It's not just the fucking um, B&M trainer's box. It's it's a barber shoe box, and it's got my whatever the fuck it is in it there. Um, but it brings me around to this thing that I find very strange, and it's something that we haven't seen or discussed much about Paul or his behaviour. Like, it hasn't actually been a feature of Paul and his behaviour at any point. Um... So let me move my camera now. Sorry, let me move my Firefox so you get more of a view. There's a light at the top of the room, and there's a, and that is all the view we get of it, sorry. Um, it's a, a framed image. So is this a framed image, or is it a mirror around the side? And is it reflecting an image on the other side? I don't think it is. I think it's a framed image. But has it got a mirror, or is it just reflecting on the, the glass? Whoops, sorry. Oops. Is it just reflecting on the glass? Anyway, um, I think it's just reflecting on the glass. I don't think the edge is a mirror. I think it's just reflecting on the glass. But it's clearly of horse's hooves. And this one in the centre is raised in the centre. It's the focal part of the picture. It's about luck. It's about good luck, horse's hoof, good luck to me. Right? But big, heavy framed, like... This is Paul's office. This is his choice of big thing to go on the wall. I, I, <laughs> I could show. I've got. I can, this is actually quite easy. I can show you what I've got in my room. Not going to move the camera. I'm just going to get it off the wall. Love talking about me. Love talking about me. We got this from the tip anyway. Someone was throwing it out down the tip. Look. Look at that. Look at that. Wee. Put it up over here. Look. Found that my wall looks very bare now. We got that at the tip. It's a big like painting thing. Yeah, looks awful in the background there actually. Um, just gonna get rid of it. It's probably the wrong tone anyway, isn't it? There she is. Way got it from the tip. Got it from the tip. Anyway, um, the. Uh, the choice, you know, you, you, you don't have, like, you get one big statement in the room, don't you? It's like one big choice. God, it was only a tenner at the tip. Someone was throwing it in the tip. and it was, It's from Ikea, and it's a Gustav Klimt print from Ikea. It is exactly Klimt. Well done, Beth. It, it is Klimt. Um, and I was like, well, that's good. <laughs> Obviously, someone's thrown it away, and it's in the tip, but still good. <laughs> like, I'm going to have that, because I think from Ikea, they're much more expensive on the big things so good bargain that's my style um so yeah uh not just the fact that it's nice art and it the color scheme and everything works with the room doesn't it you know and all that but um the fact that it's from the tip and it was 10 pound anyway look back to paul ansel um hooves horses 
luck, symbology, big frame, up on the wall, big choice. Some people are going to say Masons maybe. But what I'm saying is a love of horses and the luck aspect, a love of gambling on the horses, of betting on the horses, of the horse racing. That's, you know, who lives in a house like this? And if you're doing that, who lives in a house like this? At that point, what's his name now? Um, what's, what's the guy's name? He did the sauce. Shit, come on, someone's going to have to... Uh, Klimt's famous, but who's the guy that did Who Lived in a House Like This? And um, he did the sauce. Noid Grossman, that's it. Nigel, Nigel's a star. Noid Grossman at this point, would draw your attention to the horse and the frame and make some sort of illusion about, like, you know, um, hanging up the silks or something. And it would turn out to be a jockey's house. Or it would turn out to be someone who was a famous sports star who owned a horse. Or Do you know what I mean? It would, it would, be, it would be like Claire Balding's house or some shit. Can I zoom in on the last round mirror? I certainly can try that for you. Um, and some people are going to want to, like, go on the... I got hurt feelings. I got hurt feelings. I don't know why it keeps doing it to me. Um, we're back, though. We're back. Yeah, we're back. Uh, the images you wanted me to zoom in, I was zooming in, and then the, the things stuttered for me. Uh, maybe I've got too much going on on my screen for it. To, maybe it's having a paddy with that. Anyway, let's get me Zoom. <laughs> me Firefox. Um, I was going. I was saying that you can get these images on the internet, rightmove.co.uk. But I'm not. I don't know. I I don't know where the ethical line is drawn. I'm really not wanting to do an Allen and be like, look inside Nicola Bully's bedroom. But uh, there's some information to be gleaned here, and I think it's important. So I'm doing it this way on Twitch. I will upload it to YouTube so everyone can see it. But I'm not making a big song and a dance and hullabaloo about it. And. Uh, if you've got you know further investigation that people want to do, then I guess it's all out there on the internet on on Right Move. So um, I will have the link in the description. You know I can drop you the link to the original thing at the end when I've gone through it because I'm now in the middle of it and the link is not what the link is. But uh, big up Floydy raiding with a party of two. Thank you very much for the the party of two. Um, nice to see you here. I'm now currently in Paul Ansell's office looking at. Uh, zoomed in pictures of his mirrors that he has above his desk. I think that's Paul Ansel. Well, it might be a photographer that works for the, um, you know, it might not be Paul Ansel at all, might it? it might be a photographer that works for the estate agent. Paul Ansel's also got a webcam on top of his, um, there's something red in the background, isn't there, that we can see as well. Something red that we can see in the background that's, that we don't see. You know, it's like some sort of side thing, sideboard with red on it. Um, but there's a person taking the photograph as well, and there's some. It appears like there might be someone next to them, like leaning over and looking in as well. Maybe like Paul is with the man while he takes the photographs. Probably would be, wouldn't he? Um, well, I say man. It, it might not be a man taking photographs. That was incredibly sexist of me, but it seems like a male frame to me. Um, big ups, Floydy. Thank you. No worries. Um, so yeah, these are Nicola Bully's. Um, uh, Nicola Bully's house is on the market and Paul Ansel's selling it and these are the photographs that accompany the, the listing. Um, big ups. <laughs> Papa was faster. <laughs> okay, I have to read words there that I've never read before in my life before. Papa was faster. Big ups. Um, so I'm drawing attention here as well to the, the horse and the, the hooves and does this mean, I, mean, I can't say that this means that Paul Ansel likes to gamble. I can't say that, can I? But I can say that he's chosen to have a big picture of a horse and a horse's hooves. And, you know, it's, it says, um, it says endeavour. It says, like, like the horse's hooves trample and they're scary and like clattering. And it says like aggression in a way. Um, but it also says good luck because the horse's hoof. Um, <laughs> pig ups. Uh, 
it's uh, it also says um, good luck for the horses who's you know it's very evocative isn't it the picture um, it's strength it's power and it also in the UK there's the Lloyds Bank adverts which are banking adverts and feature a black horse running so it's you know speaks of someone like if I'm looking at that I'm thinking of these images and that's what Paul has decided to put on his wall it talk, you know it conjures up images for me of, of these different feelings of aggression finance gambling like maybe you know who's going to love that image and want it up on their their study you know is it to try and motivate them or is it because they like gambling do you know what i mean like these are questions that now are thrown up for me and it's I don't know, maybe the estate agent has said, put something on the wall because it's a bare wall and it'll look better with a picture on it. And Paul said, I've got this old picture of a horse's hoof that someone sent me and I hate. Should I put that up? <laughs> you know, I don't know, do I? Um, there's one more thing that it really is important to mention, which is who has got links with the horses? I mean, Nicola Bully likes horses, I'm assuming. You know, riding two young daughters in the countryside. I assume they all like going on the horses like, and riding the ponies. Uh, but this is Paul's office. Uh, we're also talking about Emma White in the context of the whole thing. She's been there, big character. Uh, Emma White has riding facilities, equine facilities. I mean, she's definitely got, <laughs> listen, she's definitely got riding facilities. <laughs> don't start me, don't start me. But like, she's got equine facilities as well. Look, she's got equine facilities at her uh, Man Farm Hall or whatever, Marsh Farm Hall. Like, they've got a horse ring. Like, they're equine people, they're horsey people. Um, so there's a big link there between Paul and Emma, I suppose, and other people in the area who are quite equine. I don't know how equine Paul is. Like, uh, I don't know if he's a horse owner, uh, if he ride, rides horses, if he has any stake in any horse-related activities. I don't know if he's friends with people who like horses or anything like that. I just know he's got that big picture on the wall, and there you go. Anything else in Paul's office that you want to uh, draw to our attention or you like looking at? Uh, that you think might stand out? and Because I, I think that's what stands out to me is the horsey picture, really. And the, the, also the webcam, the idea that we've got a sort of wing mirrors on our computer so that when we're on the webcam, we can always check in the mirror and see if we're being seen. Um, like No one's going to walk in on me by mistake and I'm not going to notice them. I've got a mirror there. Uh, Paul's like stuck himself away in his little office for this as well and this is the room that Paul Ansel would have been working in when he decided to uh, go downstairs put you know deal with the morning's activities eventually go and um, you know leave from here to go and see what's going on with Nicky like this is the room he comes into in the daytime and spends the time in in the day doing the work or in the evening or whenever, doing the work. like it's, it's a small room off to the side, you know, much larger and more. This was once, maybe Nicola put those mirrors up, you know, it was once a bit more nicely decorated in this room, but Paul's turned it into his office room. But like the rest of the house is much more luxurious, I guess. Is that white powder on the black surface? That's a very good question. Uh, right on the corner here is what appears to be uh, a f one, two, three, four, five leaved flower some sort of sticker maybe one of the kids has stuck a sticker on or something there's some something else here on the, the side which i don't really know what it is um but this like i said before uh just before the um the raid so i think this this dress this dresser thing is in here because it locks i think it's a lockable unit and i think he keeps either important files or something that the kids shouldn't touch locked in there um and i don't know what the flower is for it might be air freshener or something it's something stuck on the dresser the dresser itself has lots of wavy it's not like just pure black on the surface it's got a lot of wavy lines and it almost looks like someone scratched a heart into the top actually that's a real good shout like what is that on the top of the dresser um like everything's going to be tidied away for these photographs but if we're talking about straight up and talking about whether someone's been using it for you know is that my little cocaine space then you're going to have like a space where it's going to be clear and if you're regularly using cocaine you're going to have a space that you keep clear for that purpose generally and you know use a lot and wipe down and then it gets dust like but this appears to be dusty underneath the the printer 
Um, I'm not. I'm saying probably not cocaine space, like especially maybe because it's dusty underneath the printer. That printer hasn't been lifted and cleaned. Um, even though they're selling the house and taking these photographs, the other rooms have been cleaned nicely, but Paul hasn't lifted that up and cleaned underneath it. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not been moved. Um, and I don't know how dusty this is. Or it looks to me like there is a heart. That looks to me like someone scratched a heart into it. Or drawn on it. Could use a mirror CD case. Yeah, you're right. You know, people have their own little habits, don't they? Some people use mirrors and CD cases. Some people use plates that have been in the microwave. Um, some people use, like, you know, their phone or something. But um, it's hard to establish that this is utilised for cocaine without any other paraphernalia involved, I suppose. Um, the things that stand out to me are this strange sticker and what appears to be... Like, but you've got kids. So maybe the kids sit there and do their drawings and, you know, draw on the table and there's a heart and there's some scratching stuff into it and and whatever. You know, but that would be strange if this is the locked cabinet that you want to keep stuff away from the kids. So you've locked it and then you've let the kids sit at it and play with it and mess about. All a bit, I don't know. Uh, what I actually think is this is probably a dresser that Paul has had for a long time. Like, it's come with him from his last property or something. It's the, he knows it as his secure box, so... You know, he brought it with him and he uses it to keep locked up things. So, uh, like it doesn't look like he's gone out and bought a brand new dresser to go in with his office that fits in with the decor that has a lock on it. It looks older than the other stuff. Um, so when they moved in, like, this came with him. Like, it's Paul's stuff for his office. She's got him a new table. Like, Nicola's gone out and bought a new desk and, a, you know, made the office look nice. And he's brought his old desk and his old bit of crap with him as well. Um, but yeah, so that's Paul Ansel's office. <sighs> Did you know they had a pool table and a bar? At the back of this pool table and bar arrangement, there's a little chair. Like, someone sits up to there with their computer. I'm saying, they're not at their computer now, but it's a little desk and it's a computer chair. And if you're in this room, you could bring your laptop and sit up to there with your computer. And I would, if I wanted to be on my computer in this room, with the bar behind me and the music on, the dartboard, this little shelf of gin, Emma White has a gin bar in her house. All the different gins. A little touch of Nicky there. But this is a man's room. Because of the fucking great big pool table. Do you want me to drop the link? Ali Foxy, like, you've had a look at all the photos, fair play. Um, I'm still going to go through it at this pace, but, like, if there's anything you want to bring up, you know... By all means, bring it up. Um, but I, I think I'll put... I don't know about, you know, spreading the link to this and, you know, this sort of stuff. I want to show the pictures and talk about my feelings about these certain things. But I want to be careful about the family and their privacy and trying to uh, grift their privacy for um, sensational YouTube clicks. Inside Nicola Bully's house, never before seen. Like, I can just imagine how certain people would handle it. So... Um, Anyway, I'm not. It sounds stupid to me. It sounds like I'm being bitter about YouTube people. It's just I'm being careful about this. Anyway, um, yeah, it's all right. It's no worries, no worries. Uh, this room is, you know, it's got bar, it's got the, the pool stuff. Again, it's got one blurred out picture, but that is a continuation of this room, which has got a sofa and patio doors. And I think this is the garage, isn't it? Like. That's that room there. It's the it's the it's the side of the garage with the patio doors on. So it's been turned into a man cave, exactly. This part here has been left recessed. So my guess is that this is actually an old garage. Like this strange piece of art on the wall might even be the old garage door that maybe still functions. But 
covered up by something. This recess will be, there is still a garage that you can drive a car into, but it's very small. Like instead of blocking off the garage, like if you're gonna build this man cave, your first problem is you've got two garage doors and they're gonna be there and they're in your fucking interior and they're not interior doors, they're like garage doors. So you quickly knock up a, fr a wood frame here and you box off that garage. Now you've got a garage door on the one side and a room in the other. And this one, maybe you've kept it open for some reason, maybe not. I mean, maybe that's been boxed off as, you know, blocked off completely. Uh, but maybe you don't know what you want to do with it in the future. It's cheaper to just cover it over. But it's a problem because it's cold, isn't it? Because it's a fucking outdoor garage door. This is where the heat has been put and the big sofa and this stuff to cover it over and insulate it. So that's my guess on that. You've used the space instead to have a pool table and a bar. Um, the pool table is interesting to me because on this image, it's coming this way towards us with the pockets like that. But it's a feature of the camera, isn't it? Maybe. Um, and the, the angle of the camera. Because this way, the pool table is going into that space there. So I think they're using a really strange wide angle camera to sort of give the best view of this. But you can't really see exactly the full interior of the room. But there is a pool table in there and it does appear to go lengthways towards that alcove. Um, there's also a little pink scooter, like legit a scooter in there, like a fucking Vespa. I don't know if it works, I don't know if it's a kid's toy. It's a fucking scooter, pink. Um, it's not pictured in this image, but this is the place where, uh, where this is the place where Paul, where Paul goes and plays darts and sits and chills and has a beer. I mean, forget the gin bar, that's into a peas nicky. Like, there's no Nikki in this room, is there? This is pool space. Nikki don't give a fuck about playing darts. Or she might. She might love darts. I might be being, you know, totally sexist or stupid. But this feels to me like Nikki's got the house space. She's got a little lounge. She's got, like, you know, things looking how she wants them. Paul can just go in here. Hence why I believe this little table with the comfy chair looks perfect for a laptop because most of us have our phones out doing stuff Paul obviously does his have, have his laptop out there's no way in the world like you're gonna say never need to bring the laptop in here just ignore that you, know, you can have your, your music on or your film on or do whatever can't you like this is Paul's lounge Paul's space chocolate milk or wine I'll pro soya chocolate milk every time I uh, it's interesting, isn't it? It's also featuring, like I say, a bar facility. At least drinks coolers. Drinks are a feature. Um, could it be that the children are put to bed at night and the adults come in here and have a drink and, a, you know, relax? Um, is, <laughs> is this the sex room? <laughs> um, but no, I think it's less likely that Nicola comes in here to relax after an evening and wants to have a little go on the gin bar and some pool. I think it's more likely Paul's got this for hanging out with his friends for... Paul's man's cave space, separate from the family and the, the girls, all of them female, the girls, and that, you know, Nicola chills out in the, like, it creates a separation in the marriage, it creates, like, I know that men have this man cave space, and it's a common thing these days for a man to create his own space in the man cave, but it does create a very separate entity space for um, Paul, separate from the rest of the family of an evening, if he wants it, and he obviously wanted it because he built it. Uh, it's not. I've got a mate who's doing a bit of a man cavey garage, and you know, it's it's not an awful thing. No, it's not a bad thing. It's good to have your own space and stuff, but it, it just clearly is the way that that has been arranged, isn't it? The garden is um, lovely, big. Again, I feel like a touch of uh, the interior design, the exterior design, in our Nicola Bully. Like you know, someone's done. A simple but effective job of creating that through flow with the path, the little kissing bench or whatever you call it, the little lovely bench at the bottom, which looked really nice when they put it in. They're going to grow roses over it, I imagine, or something like that. The kids play a lot in those things. That's great for them. It's it's a it's a great space, isn't it? It's a lovely space. Do notice that you're overlooked by this house at the back, and they're not going to know anything about anything, are they? But um, you are overlooked by the houses at the back, so I. Uh, you know, when police are coming round, when, um, do you know what I mean? Like when welfare checks are going on or rows or parties, this house at the back might just have an eye on that and just have a look. 
So I don't, I don't know if that makes a difference at all, but it's just there. It's just a thing that stands out to me. You know, I, I look and I see, and I say. Um, I mean, it looks great, doesn't it? it? Looks like they would have had a lot of fun in the summers and uh, a lot of space for the dog as well. Uh, nice uh, outdoor furniture. Again, like little things that we've been seeing adding up, like the clock on the way. Everyone's got home furnishings. I'm sure you've all got nice things in your house. But as we all know, it all starts to add up. And the bigger your garden, the bigger your home furniture, the play set, the things on the wall, like it starts to add up to cost a bit of money and all be quite nice and new. So, you know, they had that nice stuff. This is looking at the house from the back and it gives you a full view of the whole property, which again, like, it's it's big. You know, and you've got a lot of bedrooms there, a lot of space, uh, separate man cave, it's all been done. And now we've in included the, is that a lazy boy spa? It's one of those inflatable spas or is it more for the, the kids? I don't know. Anyway, look, it's still up in October, so I'm thinking it's a hot tub. And uh, that's out there on that patio bit. If it's still out in October and it's there now, who's using that? Like Paul, probably. Um, so we're talking about chilling, you know, relaxing, luxury space, uh, lovely big kitchen, space for the family, uh, personal spaces. The kids have their own playroom. Uh, you know, it all looks lovely, doesn't it? It all looks lovely. A bargain for the price, yeah. Probably because I suppose you could argue that um, it's got the stigma of being the Nicola Bully house. Maybe I should just fucking buy it, actually. Maybe I should put an offer in. I don't necessarily want to move there, but wouldn't it be fucking weird? Because then I could do my streams from Nicola Bully's bedroom. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making bad jokes and everyone hates me, but... Uh, <laughs> No, it's not cool to hate. It's not cool to hate. Um, the uh, <laughs> I could do my streams from Paul Ansel's office, though. Um, but yeah, Paul Ansel. Anyway, look, I legit could actually just go there and put an offer down on that and say, um, "Can I come in, like you know, look around it?" I don't think I want to. I don't think I want to live there, but it would be fucking weird. Like I said, um, I wouldn't change a thing. You know, I just get, I just I charge people tour money to, to come around and charge you charge you uh i do the airbnb on the on the pool house <laughs> just airbnb it out to true crimers um anyway look the point is that uh it could be argued that he's selling it with a stigma attached to it and they're going to just try and get the money and move on and they just want to be out of there uh with the yellow ribbons tied around the banisters strange concept um, but it could also be argued that it's too much money for Paul to maintain uh, on his own, even with the GoFundMe money, you know, a big house, uh, all those rooms and heating and energy and, you know, maybe just wants to downsize. Uh, or the other option is someone could argue that he wants to sell it for less money than it's really worth to get money quickly. Uh, and then again, that could just be normal because people need money because, you know, life is tough. Um, or it could be that like, people might want to suggest some conspiracy theory about why Paul needs to quickly get money which could also be a motive for Nicola's murder so you know those ideas are then conjured up by that as well aren't they like sorry if that sounds bad and this is a front view of the house yeah where you approach it from um up this little road then that's the pay that's the tarmac road and when you get here you go into like, like a sort of cul-de-sac of, of which the left-hand side is your bit where you do the parking, so that must be someone else's bit at the back around there. Like that's why you don't go up there parking your cars around there. Uh, but still strange to me that it's not so inviting to enter the front door. And then this is an image that we're almost quite familiar with now, taken from the other side. And this is the driveway. Now it makes sense that no one parks their car in the garages because you can't park your car in the garages. They've turned it into a man cave. And it makes sense that they use this front of the drive. What doesn't make sense to me, and still to this day, people are going to, you know, hello, welcome to the Super Chuffer channel. This is what I'm about. <laughs> Why have you parked your car so close to the garage now when on the CCTV you parked it all the way down here facing the other way? Which is normal, and what do you do normally? It seems that you, Paul, normally drive your car all the way in and park it right up there. And then maybe Nicola parks hers to the other side of it or behind it, 
probably not because you don't want to you know block each other in so up to the side of it there but why would you park it so far down the front of the drive that day why was it parked that far down so that everyone could see Nicola walking through into the, the boot and up round to the back in the CCTV as easily? Because if it was parked down like this, you wouldn't probably have seen her as easily getting in and out of the car and doing things, would you? You wouldn't have seen it as easily. So what's more common? What was more frequent? What was more done? Um, and who, in their right mind, pulls up to their house, as we've now seen the lay of the land outside it, pulls up, goes up here first, and then reverses round and just stops there. Like, who does do that to park the car? Because most of us wouldn't be fucked with that. We're just driving this way forwards. Paul does. Maybe Nicola's got... Like, he is a better driver if you're going to park conscientiously like that and give yourself space to load the dog in the morning and stuff. Maybe it's that. Or maybe it's that. But there's a question raised. These are now clearly... This one's functional. This one's still there. But is it functional? I suppose it is. But, you know, we know what's going on behind those doors now. Paul is in his man cave, wanking over the pool. To, uh, uh, playing pool. Sorry, I had to throw in a bad joke. Oh, no. Um, front of the house, back to number one. So that concludes our photographic tour. But we can also take the virtual tour of the proper tie. We can also go on a virtual tour. Welcome to the Pleasure Zone. We've got a piano. Didn't know he had a piano. And a pink scooter, which now is a child's toy, isn't it? It is, isn't it? It's got stabilizers on it. Very nice. I mean, you, your mother's... Obviously, they've been through a huge tragedy, so a pink scooter here or there is... Not going to solve their emotional problems, but it's nice for them to have it. But it's parked in here in Daddy's special office and it's parked there to make this place look like a cool zone like for the for the selling of the house isn't it it's a bit weird isn't it it's being used as an image like like image booster like that paul's got guitars got guitars up there is this a computer down here what's that there's a karaoke machine and is that just a speaker i suppose this is the music space isn't it that's the music space. Music space. Quite like this now. It's got a hat. Some reading glasses. Oh, this isn't as tidy as all that, is it? There's actually some kids stuff kicking off around here. There's plant pots and little books. Maybe the kids do use this space. But you've got a, a monitor there. It's exactly the same as Paul's office upstairs, isn't it? This is Paul's space, and that's how he's done it in the office. He's got the papers and the bits and pieces. This is Paul's like office away from the office. He's got a monitor there, the same way the laptop can plug in. I'm saying Paul sits there on his computer, out the way, round the corner, can't be seen uh, in his man cave on his computer. Paul, are you coming in for dinner? You coming in for dinner? messing about uh, am I messing about no I'm not messing about actually am I keeping a watchful eye I'm just going to take some photographs in the man cave oh yeah go ahead I'll just be out here keeping a watchful eye over your shoulder this isn't photographs I'll tell you what they do the way they take these most likely most likely is it's this the Matterport uh is this, make sure I'm not going on to um, anything strange that's going to reveal my address. Uh, the Matterport Pro is the standard camera for interior design 3D capture. And it costs about three grand. And you set it up on a tripod like that, look, and it's got an app. And it, like, so you set it up, you press go on the app, and you let it do its thing. And you don't want to be in the pictures, do you? So you probably stand out of the way, or it might remove you from, you know, the scene automatically if you stay still or something but there's a photographer like paul's not done that himself the estate agent has sent their estate agent photographer in 
they set this up in the room and they're taking photographs and Paul doesn't know what that really is and what it's doing he might have asked and they might have explained it to him but for all he knows they're taking expensive and detailed pictures I mean that's what they are doing in his space in his living space and he's had time to clean it up and to tidy it up and do whatever the fuck he wants with it um, but he has maybe an interest maybe an anxiety he stood out in the fucking back garden watching them do it that's what he's doing and he's been captured on it I mean that's him isn't it so um, whether he's talking to someone off camera here or you know what's going on uh, it's interesting and just interesting that he's been caught on there like in the other spaces in the other photographs we may not see him in the background but whilst they're in this space he's keeping an eye on them that's interesting to me still blurring the images for things that might be personal I guess uh, tonight I'm a rock and roll star bit of oasis picture of the oasis the lad Hey, I'm a lad, and I? I'm a fucking lad, I? Liam, and I fucking Liam, and I fucking teeth are bashed in, because I'm a fucking lad. Way down the fucking pub, champagne supernova, 90s lads, yeah, fucking lads, 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 way, way, oh no, he's fallen, in, oh, he's fallen and broken his arm, and lads isn't so funny now. Well, like, you know, like, lad culture in the 90s was a thing, it's now not the predominant culture, and the hangover from it is now seen slightly misogynistically in ways, um, but lads culture, you know, yeah so that's there in full and that's the part of the world they're at and I'm not dissing it I'm not saying it's awful but lad culture 90s culture it gives us more of a who lives in a house like this someone who likes to get drunk and throw their fucking weight around because I'm a fucking lad and I'll get drunk and fucking have my fucking fun you know like uh, Oasis for all that they're called and they're rock stars and I'm a rock and roll star um, it's not a sort of family environment and attitude and it's Clearly, as I've described, a sort of late 90s Manchester sort of party scene uh, hangover here for Paul, where he's built himself a bar in his own home. <laughs> this isn't Nicholas. I, he's put the, they put the gin on there like Emma White did. Oh, no, Nicky, look, you can have your bit in the bar as well. Look, I'll put your, your gin up. Look, you see, you like that. I've got all my beers. I've got my lads. I've got my, my pool. I've got my fucking, I've got my guitar. And I got my, but you can have your bit in as well, Nikki. It's for you too. You, you want a you want a man cave as well, don't you, Nikki? Um, you know, it's a bit of a contrivance to sort of give her, or maybe he just likes gin, you know. Um, but got the alcohol all there. Got the rock and roll star symbolism that I don't want to let go, even though I'm a family man. I've got my space to um, sort of ignore my family and drink and play pool. And here in that space, I've got personal items and stuff that I use and I sit here and there's a box of stuff down there as well under the table which I'm probably not going to you know have terrible incriminating evidence here in this room of course but the heater's next to that as well so I'm saying that's a space that gets sat in a lot you want to be on next to the heater um, and he's keeping a watchful eye while they enter that quite personal of spaces for Paul so that's an interesting bit <laughs> I'm quite enjoying this really what I want to take you on really is the, the journey for Nicola in the morning, but we can't go out the gate there. Look, we can't go out the gate. They've decided not to allow us that part of the virtual journey. Strange. But what we can do is we can go in and out of what I believe will be the door that was used. We can head up to the bedroom and we can start our journey there. Uh, look, caution, enter if you dare. So that's a girl, little girl's bedroom. There's a single bedroom off to the end there. And then there's... These would be the child's bedrooms, won't they? That one's another child's bedroom. It's got all stuff stuck on it. So I'm, I'm saying Paul's going to want to sleep off there on his own, yeah? This has got to be master bedroom. That's Paul's office. Ooh. What's all this shit in his office? Very... It's almost... It's almost slightly Chris Watts-esque, isn't it? To have this sort of pile of stuff there like that. Um... Especially, look, you know the estate agents are coming around and you know they're taking pictures of everywhere. So why is this like this? Dad, I love you. You're... Love, laughter and drink gin. So it's Paul that likes the gin. Unless that was something he gave to Nikki. You know, it's... you know it's a, These look like Father's Day things. It's, I think it's Paul that likes the gin. 
Um, that's the uh, the art print. I mean, it's, I suppose it's not like a naked woman on a motorcycle, is it? But um, not that there's anything wrong with a naked woman on a motorcycle. But you know what I mean? It's not like a sort of uh, it's not like Meatloaf's covers of his albums where like there's like naked bloke on the motorcycle with the big sword or anything. It's like it's but it's horses and it's the hoof. Um, you wanted more zooming in on this earlier. Well, now you can get it, but it's different. And we can see around the room, so it's a bit better. To better. Um, that is a pencil drawing of a child that's been obliterated. I believe Nicola would have drawn the pencil drawings. I don't see Paul sitting down and being an artist. Although maybe. Or maybe they had it done somewhere. Um, the desk clutter. Like, the... There's time to look into this, maybe. And, you know, I'm going to have that on the screen for a minute just so you can. Um, you know, mate, I don't know how deliberate this is to try and make himself look busy. Or more importantly, I think it's stuff to make... That he can't be, like, be asked to tidy it up. And there's a limit to how much Paul can tidy up. And in the rest of the house, with all the rest of the stuff, he's finding it quite easy. But here, there's just like a limit to how much he... With his the time and effort and whatever, he can fucking tidy up, isn't it? Like, there's a bit of a mess going on. Or you could say it's completely contrived to make him look really busy. You know what I mean? But I don't think so. I think I'm sat in front of a messy desk. I know what it's like. You get messy. Um, this is interesting because it's quite a unique uh, input device. Not a rollerball, but an input device nonetheless. So maybe something specific for CAD design, something like that. piece of technical, computer-specific technical is it for editing because you can get um let's have a look at uh cad design input device just put that it's a cad design input device first instinct was correct um this is from computer aided design so when you're drawing up plans maybe for 3d printing something um like when you're drawing up plans that look a bit like this but they're on a computer you know in the computer and you're moving around and looking at it you're doing the 3d modeling you know when you're doing your images of 3d modeling and stuff fucking fuck off i just want a picture of 3d modeling you're stupid um when you're doing cad design and 3d modeling yeah that's clearly an input device for the CAD designer on the computer. So, you know, we're talking about someone who... Um, too many fucking windows, what am I doing? We're talking about someone who's, like, literate in computer-aided design. Which, in terms of computer literacy, I know it's a specific thing. It's, it's a... Uh, What's the word? Like it's a niche, it's a specialization, but it requires a level of sophistication on the computer. And I would say in levels of sophistication, you've got CAD designer, and above it, you would probably have programmer. Below it, you would probably have someone like me, editor, content creator. I think editing on a computer software is easier than CAD design. And I think if you can learn CAD design and understand you know, the 3D space and how to manipulate it with this new controller and how to get that going on your computer, then you can probably do a bit of basic video editing. Like cutting things and moving them and shaping them around. Like, if you're a CAD designer, you've probably used Photoshop and you're probably familiar with it. Because I am and I'm an editor. So this is a level of technology that I don't have in my home, a specific new input device for a specific computer set like we know paul does um engineering and stuff don't we like you know for work and that but there's like evidence of it you know maybe it's just been put there maybe it's a second-hand item that he's never plugged in and he's just put it there as a desk weight um but my guess is it proves to me that paul is capable of editing software on you know editing stuff on the internet uh like the cctv that we've got those huge problems with um which i'll quickly just uh, have I got it somewhere? Hang on, let me close that. Let me close that. Let me have a look at closing these fucking windows. Um, let me close that. Haven't I got it open in one of these fucking windows? So many fucking windows. Uh, 
let's get open. I just had it open then, didn't I know. Just quickly, because, you know, it's like a motif for this sort of stuff. Um, that's CCTV. This is Danvers X. Like, they showed this, we talked about it the other day, but lots of people might not have seen me talking about it. Um, this is just like, the, the CCTV was 100% faked, because that's the original frame, that's Nicola Bully in the bottom left, that was an image that we were shown in the media that was cropped in and taken from the wider frame. That's the whole frame, but there's bits missing from the frame. There's bits that were cut in, added in, changed. It's definitely fake. The original timestamp would have been on the bottom, so they did cut that off because you can see the bottom of the frame extends all the way to here. So for this to be in the frame, how can it not have anything along the white bottom? And I said it all along. I said it moves, it jumps, there's extra space on the sides. Uh, now we can see that it absolutely has been cut, distorted, changed. Um, Jizzy's True Crime logo on it. The character walks over the top of the logo. The logo's on top of the character as well. So many, so many problems. Whoever's done this, it's absolute BS. Total BS. Um, but the reason I'm bringing it up just at this moment is because going back to this walkthrough... I don't know if that computer itself is the one that does all the, the cool, you know, the cool stuff for Paul. You know, is that his main computer that he's always used? Uh, maybe it is a powerful computer. I don't know enough about laptops to just look at one and say that looks like a powerful one. But it doesn't quite to me. I'd expect him to have something a bit more powerful than that. A bit more like a, you know, a big desktop PC or a Mac or something like that. So I'm saying whilst he's got this set up here like this... He's got other spaces in the house that can accommodate computers. And maybe he's got another computer that does the, the hard work that isn't being seen here or is no longer in the picture. He doesn't want people access to or anything. Um, there's a watch on the side there, which is strange. Like just bits and pieces, I suppose, just thrown around. We could go into more great detail about bills and gas bills or whatever they appear to be or standard life insurance, isn't it? Standard life insurance. Um, you know, we could look at trying to look at confidential files more clearly, if you like, but that's as zoomed in as I can make that. And um, uh, my other point about it is, you know, is it right for me to be trying to intrude in that way? And would Paul even bother to leave things that were going to incriminate him on the desk when the people are coming around to take the 3D photos? I don't think so. But... You know, it looks like bills, it looks like insurance, that's, ooh, you know, something to talk about there. Maybe this is all designed to get you to talk about things that are on his desk as red herrings, I don't know. Um, but he knows that people are coming to take these photographs, that's for sure. And then you've got these little items on top, 2022, some red roses, maybe someone made it at school. Uh, you know, I do think there's a, it's worth having a good look in here. Bit of dress-up material. Is that a strange bag? Is it fitness stuff? Is it just wrapping paper? Kid stuff? A bit strange to have all that jazzy stuff parked in the corner there like that. Is it whole, is it covering stuff? Because there's shoe boxes down there. Has that been thrown on top of it? Has it been moved from over this pile to that pile? I don't know. Again, we've got the barber foot bo footwear boxes. And the lock. It's definitely now a lock on the cabinet. And you get more of a view here. They're heart stickers. So I'm saying the girls have done that, the little girls. Like maybe this was... I don't know why. You know, maybe it just happens in family life that little stickers end up in places. Um, but locked nonetheless. And there's a big wire going on here on top of this. And that's a power pack. So it's not a good idea to have that power pack permanently there like that. And I don't know what it's powering... So it looks like there's another item, like an electronic item, like another laptop that might have been hastily stuffed beneath there. Like, I was questioning why we've got this pile of crap on here. Like, maybe Paul has just thought, hang on, they're taking the photos and that fucking laptop's out. <laughs> That's got to be hidden. And he's just piped it under there. Something's under there, plugged in. That's a power pack, isn't it? Maybe nothing's plugged into it. Maybe it's just on there. But it seems weird. Um, and all of these items seem weird why you would have all this stuff in your office um, an old iPad box maybe uh, but all this stuff in Scotiana Scotiana I think 100% Paul knows that this is going to happen 
And I think for everywhere else in the house, he's been, it's spick and span, but it's been easier because it's always been spick and span. Um, his room here feels like a bit of a, a mess. And I think some of it is literally Paul is a mess and messy. So some stuff would have been right. I can't be asked to tidy this up. I don't need to hide a, a tape measure and a wire and a phone charger. And this is the sort of stuff that Paul doesn't know where to put. And like, how do you tidy it up? You know, so I don't think he's scared of anyone seeing it. It's just stuff. And so he hasn't been asked because he doesn't have to be because this is his space. That's being dried on the radiator as well, which is a strange move. That is. That's a very strange move. Like you've got all the other facilities in the house for laundry and, and things. And upper part of a child's lawn uh, torso. Um, it's, it's uniform. It's the upper part. It's not the downstairs part. And it's being dried almost as if like, you know, washed and dried to order quickly. Like daddy sat here on his office thing. He's quickly put that on there because he's going to need that. Like instead of drying it anywhere else in the house, it's being dried there. It's a bit of a strange one, that to me. You know, maybe Paul's just like haphazard like that. But I'd have thought that comes out of the washing downstairs in the washing. And if he needs to put it on a radiator, like to dry quickly, you wouldn't bring it all the way upstairs and put it, well, maybe, unless you're saving money on the heating. So you're not having the radiators on in all the house. But you're going to be sat here and you're going to have the radiator on. So you put it on there because that's the one that you're going to be sat there with the radiator on. Like, it's just a weird move, isn't it? And then I, I shouldn't be distracted from uh, this as well. The best dad in the world. Proof. And again, does that make it to the internet? Well, they blurred out their photos. So, but it's got their name on it. It's on the internet already. I haven't done it. It's already on the internet. That's the fact of the matter with this. Uh, Vaseline's an interesting item to have on there. Might just be a thing that gets kicking around, but um, little thing of Vaseline. You know, it's not consistent these items, but then he is, you know, living with two young girls and like being a father. So maybe there's little items that get picked, like these wristbands and jewelry and stuff, like scatter the place. This key ring that I don't know what the fuck it is um, a lot of pens you're going to need the pens there's a little box some American monies maybe that's for luck because who wants to keep a dollar of American monies like it's totally useless like, even if you're going to keep it until the next time you go to America why is it on your fucking desk like, that's weird isn't it a bundle of American dollars they're useless they're basically worth about 50p like 80p like it's, it's probably about two pounds worth of money. Like, I don't know why it's on your desk in dollar form. Um, he's certainly not traveling back and forth to New York all the time. But he does work with America and American money. So, you know, it's like a little token, isn't it? Uh, you know, and then we've got the superstition of the horse and the hoof on the wall. You know, maybe it's his lucky dollars. Trying to make some money, trying to get those dollars. Um, I don't know if the, the webcam is on. <laughs> The red light's on. I don't know if the webcam is on, but the red light appears to be on. And I don't know if that means, like, this is covered. I think webcams have a cover. So I think that looks like it's covered, is my guess. Um, or maybe he's keeping an eye on the people that are doing the filming in this room, the video. You know, because Paul's not in this room. The 3D camera is. And my guess is that they put the 3D camera in the room and they say, we're going to come out of the room and press the app and then beep, and then it does it for you. And that in that one where we're outside, Paul has been stood outside and they, they've hid around the side because they don't want to be in the picture and they've pressed the beep and it's done the picture. Um, so no one's in this room while the photos are being taken. So is the webcam left on for security? Uh, is this webcam on? Because that webcam doesn't have a cover. Uh, it, it all appears to be off. Does this run to something else? That looks like the light's red. Maybe it's just reflection of the infrared beam that comes out from this camera. Um... Just observations. Just observations. Big ups, Jamie. No, I'm <laughs> I don't think Paul likes dressing up in these clothes. I'm suggesting that they're the daughter's stuff. 
but its position in this room is strange because there's so many other spaces in the house that are sort of feminine dominated and it doesn't seem necessary to and also the 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 way this chair is covered in this stuff it means that, that no one's sitting in this chair and chilling in daddy's like office because you can't sit in the chair because there's all this crap here um, and it does hide stuff i mean i don't know what it hides but there is stuff this looks like some sort of zippable soft case maybe that's an ipad case that you know you can put your ipad in and sit it on your lap and stuff because there's an ipad box on top um and this wire goes somewhere and it just seems like i know paul is cluttered in this room but it seems strange there's some sort of metal thing down there um it seems strange for it all to just be piled on there i don't get it no, I just it'd be more sensible to put it anywhere else in the house for it to live anywhere else in the house we're not gonna go in the children's bedrooms of course but I'm surprised as well that that's obviously a window over there to the back I would have thought that this space would have been more natural to put in the master bedroom but it's just not big enough is it but if you're having two daughters or two kids I'm gonna to want to put my bedroom away from their bedroom because of all the sex I'm gonna have with their mother <laughs> But you know what I mean? It's like a bit of privacy from the kids, isn't it? Like, you know, being up the other end. But so you've got the two kids' bedrooms and then this little one here. Oh, this is a bathroom. Hang on, I'm tripping. Where's their bedroom then? I'm going to have to go in all these rooms. Sorry. Caution, enter if you dare. This is a child's bedroom. What? This one's a child's bedroom. With bunk beds. So they can have a sleepover and friends around, I'm assuming, then. So where's the fucking... Oh, it's over here. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Next to Paul's office. They just haven't got a good picture of it. That's not a window there. That's the entrance. They, the master bedroom is over there on its own. Off there. The master bedroom is over here. Next to Paul's office. But I can't take you round on the journey. Because the way they photographed it. But this is the master bedroom with an ensuite. Which you would think would be Nicola's bathroom ensuite. You know, maybe Paul's taking it over now. But in the way, in my experience of living with families, you would think that you kind of like divide them out, don't you? There's a bathroom. There must be. We've just been in it. Jumping around. Um, there's a bathroom for the, the, the younger kids. Maybe the, you know, Nikki and the girls have their own bathroom and Paul has his own bathroom. You know, maybe it's that. But I'd have thought I, they would, anyway, have some sort of segregation. Of, not perfectly segregated, but um, the ensuite is in the bedroom with the adults. So it would be one of the adults' bathrooms in the morning when everyone's getting ready at the same time. You know, who gets to take priority where is you've got that family shared bathroom with the bath in it and the kids get ready in there and do their teeth and everything and in here the adults have got the space and can you know have that space for themselves rather than the kids i'm guessing right just seems legit doesn't it just seems like a more normal thing to do uh and this is just that shower space that we looked at before okay so the master bedroom Why the yellow strew on the banister poles? Yeah, we looked at it before. The yellow um, ribbon was a uh, symbol during Nicola Bully's missing... Oh, when she was missing, they were tying yellow ribbons everywhere, weren't they? All up and down that bridge. And it's a symbol in the UK of someone that's missing. Like, if someone's missing, you tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. And, you know, one day when they come home, you know, they'll see... You know, it's like a, a symbol that you've got someone that's out that's missing and please come home. Um, and the yellow ribbon was used. And then it was also in February and March, April... It's the time of year that the daffodils come up. So it coincided with this sprouting and blossoming of yellow in and amongst the environment, the daffodils. And so uh, in some way, in the public consciousness. And that's what this bear is. That's what this bear is. On its foot there, on its foot you can see someone sewn like a daffodil. So in the public consciousness in some way, the daffodil, the yellow, the yellow ribbon got associated with Nicola Bully's missing being missing and then after she got found dead 
Um, they persisted with it as like a symbol, which is weird because it doesn't mean now that she's been found dead, it means something different. Right? You don't longer have the yellow ribbon now. You have like the mourning and the black armband, I suppose. But they persisted with it as a symbol anyway. In a way, it's also the symbol of um, charities like the Marie Curie Cancer Fund, I think, and other things. So. It, it just gets tied up, doesn't it? Just icons and symbology. But they've kept in the house, they've kept the, um, as you saw there, they've kept the yellow ribbons tied to the banisters at the top here. I imagine when she was missing, they tied them there. That's what you'd think, isn't it? They appear to have been plaited by the girls, maybe one each by each girl. Um, maybe it's a thing they do, like as a family, when you miss mommy, tie a knot in the ribbon and think of her or something. I don't know. Right, but it does seem strange for it to have been there the whole time, no removing it. Even the estate agents have decided it's worth leaving it in. We've got no guarantee of when or when it was put there. Um, Jamie says it's about suicide prevention. It may well be. Now that I've said that word, I'm now excommunicate off YouTube and I've got to be really careful at the moment, but um, it may be. For me, it doesn't, like, you know, symbologically, it may be, it may be that, but symbologically, in folklore and British, you know, what it, a yellow ribbon is about missing persons and it's been wrapped into this um, Nicola Bully thing. Like, there's a song about it, about yellow ribbon around an old oak tree or something, I think. I might be wrong. Anyway, it's what it means to me, but that's what it means to you, so it's all good. Um, it's all good as well. I don't think there's any problem with saying the word on YouTube. I really don't. I think it's all about context and the way you use the language and what you're talking about. But of course, um, I recently had a, a strike from some idiot who seems to think that they can try and pop me for hate speech. Um, and I'm clearly not a hate preacher, am I? So, uh, if anything, I'm on the opposite side of that um, of that political landscape. Yeah, so this is the bedroom. This is a shrine to Nikki then, yeah? Like, it's a picture of the two of them. It's a cuddle, cuddle bear that seems fairly new. Maybe a gift from someone. You know, maybe something to... Whatever, there's a plant, an orchid that sits in a vase that is obviously about renewal and growth and, you know, putting a plant there, isn't it? Um, so there's a book as well, which I don't know what it is. I think it might be... Um, a wedding al album or like a photographic album or something, uh, a candle even. Like, you know, we're going full shrine here. And then this thing. So what's this thing? Like, I don't even know what that is. A baby monitor. Could be. I, mean, I don't know. It, it looks to me like a digital camera, but yeah, it could be a, like the same technology put into a baby monitor these days. Could well be a baby monitor. Like it has no place there, does it? Unless it's a treasured item that Nicky used to treasure, the old baby monitor, or he's still using it to monitor. But if you're still using it to monitor the kids, you don't put it on the shrine. Um, it's just fucking weird that that's there, whatever it is. And then underneath there are two boxes, just storage, you need storage, I suppose, but um, what is being stored and what's being kept beneath the shrine, I'll be very interested in because it's not just storage space, it's going beneath the shrine. Uh, two plugs plugged in, black and a white one. The white one, I have no idea. The black one is the Telis, yeah? But where does it go? Are like they're chasing it into the wall in some way? But the telly's up on the wall. So I imagine they've dealt with the wires somewhere. And that's the telly down there. But both things are plugged in. And they don't... Where's the white thing? What's the white thing that plugs in there? There's an adapter plug as well on there. Maybe that's a symbol of their travels together. Bit sad. And I think that's her phone. I mean... It would be a bit... Like... Listen... The estate agent's coming around to take photos of your bedroom and you're selling the house. And I know you don't want to dismantle the shrine, but maybe put some of that stuff in the storage boxes because it seems, I don't know, a bit... Anyway, that, I'm assuming that's Nicola's phone. I mean, I'm assuming it is. It might not be. You know, maybe he destroyed her phone and put a new one in a phone case just so it looked like the phone exists. I don't know. 
I don't know. They forgot to blur the reflection. Good call. Well, we know who it is. Um, and it's blurry enough as a reflection to not get me binned off the internet. <laughs> but good shout. Well spotted. Thanks. That'll get me done off the internet. <laughs> it's their fault. This is what they put on the internet. Um, the site plug is attached to the monitor. Good shout. Thank you. Thank you in chat. I do need help with this, don't I? That's plugged in. So this fucking thing's plugged in then. Like that is plugged in. Is it possible they recorded something on an old digital camera or something? And like, you know, it's an old memory and he can play it. So he keeps it plugged in. Or like, I like to think that I keep it plugged in and it's sometimes, you know, she might call me or like, what the fuck is it? And why is it plugged in? And what is it? Is it CCTV on the house? It looks like it says BT on it to me. Like British Telecom. Could it be, a, you know, a, a router? And it just so happens that like you need to put the router there. So fuck the shrine. I need to put the router there. Um, it's a fucking weird thing that is to me. I don't know what it is. So I can't judge it. But uh, it's there on the shrine anyway. These lovely glass. I, I love a bit of glass. I'm a big fan of a bit of glass like this. The way they catch the light. And they cast the light around in the in the the window like that. That's lovely. That's Nicholas stuff. Like Paul's not gone out and bought those. Um, I mean, I might be wrong. Maybe Nicola just hated interior design, and Paul's just really got an eye for it. But we've seen inside his office, haven't we? So, whose side of the bed? I don't know why it matters, but for some reason, it feels like it matters to me. Whose side of the bed is whose? The books are deliberate. They've been placed there by like estate agents. You know, maybe he does sit at night and read, but he, no one's sitting at night and reading those books. They're not even leafed through. Uh, it's more likely that he's on his phone at night. Is that an ashtray? No, it's the bottom of the vase. So there's no ashtray. So it's a bit of a strange spot. Um, the two big heavy vases have been there for a long time, haven't they? They're, you know, they don't say anything to us. Um, this side, we've got some sort of. Another book that has been read a bit more. Some sort of spray and cream and... I don't know what that is, that tiger thing. This bed's been sat on and... and recently, you know, it's been made special for the, the photographs and then someone sat on it. Makes me think of those pornography films where they have a kissy with the estate agent, but pretty sure that's not been happening. I don't know. Um, storage on top of the built-in wardrobes. Built-in wardrobes. Strange light under the bed. The psychics are going to say that's Nicola Bully's ghost. Um, strange whiteness under the bed in the reflection. Might be part of the reflection. It might. It's probably more likely than not just the way this breaks up the light in a funny way happens to be reflected at the same point as under the bed. Because there's the, the light from the windows, the square windows. So beneath those square windows, those glass things. Um, and there's one over here. So I've got a square window and a thing there. And on the opposite side, I've got a square window letting in light and a thing there and one there as well, which probably doesn't let in as much light and isn't as obvious as a square window. Um, maybe it's a reflection of those things. Like you've got the reflection of them there, but then down here you've got the sort of, you know, you can see those square windows in the shadows. So you might have a funny shadow coming off that glass thing creating that whiteness underneath the bed I don't know I think that's what it is it's a continuation of a reflection here in that glass uh, and I get no real indication of anything else to, of anything else strong here I and mean, I'm assuming Paul's still sleeping here and that's his regular nighttime night nights Starray says it's definitely a baby monitor. Um, 
good shout. So they bought that when they've had a baby. Like they're not new these things. You don't get them like this now, do you? This isn't the current the current model. Um But it's been brought out and it's been plugged in. I wonder if they record. Hang on, I just closed that. Didn't I? The baby monitor thing, did I? Do they record? Link talk. Menu select mic volume. Batteries. I wonder if they record. Video sound baby monitor. Um, yeah, I'm going to stay away from rumours about whether Nicola was pregnant or not because I don't know, you know, and I'm not. Like, it definitely wasn't on the autopsy they mentioned that, so um, I'm going to, you know, not. Hearsay is not, you know, not anything I listen to, but. Um, I'm looking for Google now, and I'm just looking for this. And does it record? I don't think it does, does it? No, I don't think it does. I think it's, but it's CCTV. So you see, you might read into that, and you might look at it and say, on the on the shrine, because if you're going to have to plug it in, bear in mind it's got to be plugged in in this room. So where else can you plug it in? You can either plug it in over here or over here, and you've got to move the big heavy lamps, maybe the bed, uh, the the sideboards. How many plugs are available to you there? Do you want it plugged in next to your bed, or do you just go for the easy job? with the available plug of right there and put it on that table because the shrine's not that important to you. <laughs> I don't know. Um, does it, if it's a memory of Nikki, it doesn't, it's not required to have it plugged in, but it's plugged in. So it's there because it's functional and it either functions and we're going to have to look at the children's rooms to confirm this or, or not. And I, you know, this might be another thing that might want to get cut from the main thing, which I don't intend to do a big, I mean, we're going to be on for hours here. So I'm, I'm intent to just throw this up you know, I don't think I've said anything awful. Um, let me just quickly see my stream manager. I've been on for nearly two hours. Like, you know, if I've got to edit it, I've got to watch it all back and say, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. I think I've been fine. I don't think I've said anything awful other than the one thing about child incontinence, which is, a, you know, just a thing. Um, night terrors trauma, yeah. So this is the thing, yeah. Maybe you're keeping an eye on one of the kids. So we can go in the kids' room and we can see if there's one of these cameras. Yeah, agreed. So we can have a look at that. If there's not, then it's also possible that you've got that there and you've got the camera pointed out of the window or downstairs at the front door or you're scared about people coming in the close so you've got it pointed at the, the window that overlooks the close or, you know, you could use it as CCTV, just outright CCTV, can't you? So um, it could be that. Mind you, they've got normal, you know, they've got ring doorbell and CCTV you know they've got see if they want that they've got that so um, interesting image on the wall as well interesting piece of artwork of a naked woman and her bum bum uh, is that drawn by Nicola Bully it looks like the sort of art piece that somebody who went you know had a bit of an artistic flair at school might have drawn is it Paul Ansel's drawn it you know with the graphic design stuff it looks like somebody's hand drawn it and it might be kept for that reason that it's one of their own you know maybe Paul drew Nicola um, you know, draw me like one of your ladies. It looks like it's that rather than someone's bought that piece of artwork because they like it. Uh, so that's what I'm taking from the bedroom, isn't it? That's my feelings on the bedroom. What do you think? Oh, we've said we're not going in the kids' bedrooms, but I do just want to go and have a quick look for a camera, really, don't I? Before we leave and go on. I, no, we haven't even started the journey of what went on. Yeah, there's the camera. Camera confirmed to watch this child sleep. I 
I'll say this now again in case I completely edit that out. Camera confirmed in child's bedroom to watch child sleep overlooking the bed. So I've gone into Paul's office by mistake actually then. Uh, the master bedroom, sorry. The master bedroom, this plugged in on the shrine Oh, oh, this is fucking heavy. Do you know what this is? Have you, have you figured it out? Do you know what this is? Have you figured it out? This is proper heavy. Whew. Detective Scott. I don't know how to... You see, I'm glad I'm doing this on Twitch because we can edit this out. Um, That's so that Mommy can watch you sleep. We'll plug that in. Mommy's always used to watch you on the... Uh, I'm, I'm going to feel like I'm going to cry. You know? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just... <sighs> it's going to make me cry if I have to describe it, but... Mommy's always watched you on the... I can't, I can't, sorry. I haven't got any tissues in here or anything to wipe my eyes with. Um, what this is, is that Mommy's always... <laughs> God. Mommy has always watched you on the baby monitor when you were sleeping. So I'll plug it in and I'll put it on the shrine with the stuff and Mommy will watch you while you sleep. That's what that is, isn't it? I hope I'm not being played here. I'll tell you what, I hope I'm not being played for an emotional fool by Paul Ansel and the contrivance. You know, I hope this wasn't set up like this to make it, you know, I hope I've had to discover that and work that out myself. Um, you know, maybe that's something they thought the armchair detectives would do. Shouldn't use that phrase, should I? You know, I, maybe it was a generic phrase. Um, maybe it's something they thought we would do and we would then work it out and then we'd have this emotional response. Um, but for me, it is an emotional response. And if it is the pure reality of, I can't be asked to tidy this up for the photographs, they can just see this. Um, then that's a shrine to Nicola with her personal effects and belongings. It's all symbolism. So it makes me feel like it is a little bit contrived, but then maybe it is. And, you know, you'd have to make up your own decisions on whether you think Paul has placed these items here so that when we look at these pictures, we read this story into it or whether this story is the truth of it. And, you know, I just, well, anyway. Um, <sighs> let me calm down a bit. Because, uh, I mean, I, I should be both emotional and emotionless about this because it could be completely contrived or it could be just real life. And I, I, I do reflect on the whole Nicola Bully thing at some points and think, you know, what if she did just fall in? You know, I do think that sometimes. Um, you know, what if it's all just real? Anyway, that's what that is, isn't it? That's what that's doing by the bed. I suppose that all has to stay in the edit now because I've talked about it extensively and either we completely edit it out or we leave it in. And me personally, I think I'd rather just leave it in and let people in, because people are going to look at that and talk about it. What is it? What's it doing? They're going to have that emotional response and then they need to make their own decisions as to, like, I don't, like narratives, control of narratives, we've discussed heavily in the IOPC report, which I haven't yet done my reflections on. Um, although I'm thinking about things. Um, so construction of narratives is very important to the police and these people at the moment. And they know that Paul's going to be... Like, I mean, Paul knows he's going to be doing this. This could be incredible storytelling. And if it is narrative-based storytelling with props, then it's incredible. Because it took for me to... that They know that you're going to zoom in. They know you're going to find this and say, what's this? 
So, you know, it's a, but it is still very clever. Like, it's either very clever narrative storytelling that made me cry, or it's the truth that made me cry. So either way, like, I don't know, you know, but it made me cry. I'm okay now. And um, depending on how you feel about the truth and what's presented to you in these images on rightmove.com by Paul Ansel, who is selling the house, uh, you know, you can make up your own opinions on that, I suppose. Agreed. Agreed. And I certainly don't want to like influence people's own reasoning because I don't. At this stage in this, like, I was having a bit of a chat about it yesterday with some people. But at this stage in this, I'm less. You know, I'm like a pie pie chart with like 30% this, 30% that, and then the other 30% is divided up into little things. And I haven't got my like clear line and absolutely certain about this and this and nor should I have because I'm not Sherlock Holmes and I'm just some chuffer on the internet who like talks about things mainly from the perspective of watching people's interviews and videos and reacting to them and analyzing body language and stuff talking psychology with a friend or two uh, so you know it's a bit outside my realm and remit to be claiming that I'm going to bust the case wide open or um, have some special insider criminology mind I'm just talking about things that I see. So yeah, it's up to everyone else to think about and feel about this as they wish. But, um, you know, God bless those children and God help them is something that I definitely think. And regardless of props or shrines or um, what would appeal to be, um, you know, heartbreaking links, it... it uh, like that's the truth of the case is that it is heartbreaking for those children and um like that's why i think at some point even though there's a whole bunch, i'm gonna just say this anyway oh, fuck it there's a whole bunch of people that i really respect on twitter who are doing great work presenting lots of interesting evidence and just like this video from dan buzz i've got it i'm still having I have i closed that window now just like this video from Dan Buzz Ekitsuj, um, and this image and the other evidences that are presented, there's still some things to talk about. And I felt that I've got three or four things to talk about, the Fitbit, this, um, but individually they don't make a sort of hour and a half full episode. And I don't quite know what I'm trying to say other than look at it. It's fucking shady. Like, I can't tell you who's done this, but I can tell you it's definitely been done. And I did tell you. It's definitely been manipulated. So um, I don't know how far I can carry the torch, so to speak, and how many, like, at some point, me making episodes about Mick and the Bully gratuitously, or as things happen in the news, or as they're fed to me by the mainstream news, or through the people that have their own interests in different ways because of their own reputations or stories or narratives or controls, the IOPC report, Peter Folding talking about, all of that, yeah, I want to be careful to be careful and not try and jump on a bandwagon of making money off the Nicola Bully case and growing my channel on the Nicola Bully case because my channel is me and body language reacts and social commentary and um, it's not predicated on the Nicola Bully case. And as I said, I feel like I'm just one person who has done quite a bit on this and has still got a few things to say and I'm now saying some more stuff, but um, I'm careful not to turn this into a a big Nicola Bully show um, and song and dance, so to speak. Anyway, I'll climb down off my high horse. Um, and back into the bedroom. So now we begin another difficult, really difficult aspect of this, which I probably could cut into a second video, maybe. So, you know, maybe I will cut that into a second video or not. So uh, well, I'll say this now in case I do. You know, you be good, my little podcast. If you can't be good, you're naughty. Um, cut. And then if I do do a new video, then hi, you're with Scott. I'm Super Chuffer. It's midnight. It's always midnight. This is your right ear and your left ear. We're in mono. And um, we're going to walk the route now, you know, the morning routine and just have a quick think about through that. I probably won't do it in a second video, actually, will I? Why did I say all that? We're going to do the morning routine. And my head's a bit, you know, whatever. It's two, three o'clock in the morning in the world where I live. And I really should be knocking this on the head now, but this is what my brain has been doing for, to me for the last few nights. 
So now we're doing it live on the internet. So in the morning they wake up. This bedroom is Paul and Nicola. Like this is Paul's testimony, I suppose, isn't it? That we go on. Um, Nicola's already got up. He said, you know, that morning he was tired and he slept in because he was working late in the office, the next door room. He was in here late working and Nicky was in bed the next... This is something I wonder about. He's got that downstairs space. He's got the man cave. He's got the pool room. He's got the... Um, the space to put a computer down there and a computer chair and all that stuff as well um, and if he wants to work late and have his TV on and do stuff everyone else is in bed here the kids are in bed in these rooms and all that but is it possible that he's not out the back um, you know is it when we when he's saying he works late on the office and stuff you know is it possible that he's not sat in this chair here out the way where he can, you know, be in his man cave. That's what it's for, isn't it? That's what it's for. So I do wonder about that. I'm trying to take us back through the house up to the bedroom. I feel like an estate agent a bit now. So they get up in the morning. Nicola gets up and she gets the kids up. I don't know if the girls get up themselves, you know, whatever. She gets the kids up. This is the bathroom that they're going to use, isn't it? Well, it's got to be, hasn't it? Like, you're going to get the kid. You're not going to go into the wake up daddy in the ensuite. So Nicola's probably going to not even bother. With, like, maybe the kids are in there and she uses the ensuite herself, but she's not going to be showering and messing about waking up daddy, is she? Because otherwise he'd be awake and Nicola got up, she had a shower and was doing stuff. Most likely everyone gets ready here, including Nicola, I'm guessing. Um, we can now get a closer read on these things, which are body shop. These things are. Maybe they were bought for daddy as a gift. Like they look a bit masculine, but they might not be. You know, maybe that I'm being sexist in my thing, but someone likes to soak in the bath here, or it was designed to have. You know, there's the, the bath soak stuff, um, and I'm still intrigued by this. Let's get naked sign, or just get naked. Whose choice that was? Uh, but yeah, this is the toothbrushes in the morning, isn't it? Look, more clear now, much more clear. So, as Paul said, Nicola was very organised, everything was done. So when he gets up in the morning, this is not a busy thoroughfare. Although some mornings it can be hell, like he said, it can be chaos in the mornings, can't it? Uh, but even if it is, if he's in bed there, and we're not confirming whether Paul sleeps anywhere else in the house at this point, although there aren't many sofas that look like a good contender for regularly slept on, but it, it would have been tidied up and moved and tidied up, wouldn't it? Um, but I'm not seeing space in the man cave really for sleeping in the man cave either unless it's a sofa bed that pulls out maybe um, and whether you would or not you know whether you'd uh, end up just coming to bed uh, it's a strange one as well if you've got a, uh, like if you've got a wife and children and they're going to get up in the morning for the school routine so they're all asleep in bed and you're working late because of the America thing or whatever and it's like four o'clock in the morning when you go to bed, you are going to disturb your wife. Like, she's got to get up in the morning. Like, some people choose not to do that and just say, fuck it, I'll sleep on the sofa. And, you know, like, Chris Watts had a separate sleeping arrangement. Um, there has been not many indications of that here, but we'll look into it in a minute. Anyway, you get up in the morning. The kids do their brushing the teeth and all that. So, downstairs. And it's this... This house has this lovely natural way, even though they don't seem to use this front door very often. Uh, is this an alarm system? Or is that the thermostat? Maybe it's an alarm, I don't know. Um, this stuff has been put up since Nicola's death, obviously. Living in harmony with nature is essential to nourish our soul and feel more balanced and joyful in our lives with a black heart. Whatever you do, don't get stuck on one thing that ruins your day. Smile and be grateful. Life is too short to waste on negativity with a black heart. Um, I wonder if they've been put up as a gift since Nicola's death. 
seems a bit strange and it's almost like they're a message to people who are going to be looking around at the pictures in the house isn't it um because that's not been blurred out and nor of these pictures over here of the dog of willow willow's not dead is she but pictures of the dog or maybe an old dog that is dead and they're covering over a more personal picture the pumpkins knitted pumpkins maybe that's a school project um and this like it's all very nicola it's all very like nicely kept um and i don't know if paul's busy doing that himself like if he likes candles but um and there's that same table shape that paul has in his office so nicola bought the table in the office i'm telling you um but yeah they come downstairs in the morning sorry i want to try and look at these as well but they're a bit too blurry for me to see but they're going to be equally you know positive messages so you come down in the morning what's this room in here actually oh there's another toilet down here absolutely then yeah this is you know in the morning no one's waking daddy up um this this mirror has not been done properly who's done that that's strange why is the mirror needed a, a bad cleaning that's one way you might say, do they grab that mirror down for the cocaine party? I mean, I'm only being facetious, but um, do you know what I mean? Like, it's in here. It's really close by. It's a big mirror. Like, you could grab it down for the party, couldn't you? And then put it back up badly washed the next day. Um, this one's talking about gin and tonic as well. Look, very adult. You are the gin to my tonic. And Paul likes a bit of gin, or maybe Nikki did, but there's a lot of gin going around, especially Emma's house has got a lot of gin as well. Remember, she's got the gin bar. Gin's a big theme. Um, but this sneaky little downstairs toilet is more of a party toilet then. Like, there's no toothbrush or anything like that. That's all being done upstairs. The kids come downstairs. Wow. Wow, we. I mean, how many times is it going to disconnect me tonight? I've been offered an OBS update, so maybe I should take the update. Uh, we're all back though, aren't we? We're all working. And uh, stream manager, we're still streaming. Yeah, two hours 40, we're still streaming. So I don't know how much of this I just said, so I'll just say it again really quickly. Um, what I'm taking from this bathroom is that it's not used by the kids in the morning, really, unless someone's desperate for the toilet and someone else is in there because um, there's none of that, you know, love and attention. It's a guest downstairs toilet, hand towel, simple soap. And it's got a sign that says, gin, you are the gin to my tonic. We know that Paul likes the gin. There was a sign in his room that says gin. There's got gin on the bar. Or it might have been that Nikki liked the gin, but there's gin all around. It's a big feature of Emma's bar as well. But um, at marsh farm hall is the gin bar is a big feature there so this feels like a bit of a party toilet as well and what i mean is you have friends around you know people coming around and they pop into the downstairs toilet and you've got a, a, a cheeky little thing there that's more adult than it is for kids isn't it so you know the kids use the upstairs bathroom in the morning routine this bathroom is not used and then this is really dirty and messy on the, the mirror it's had a really shifty quick bad cleaning job and I'm not saying people have used it to do cocaine. I'm not saying that. However, what I am saying is that if um, a bunch of mates were having a party, they wouldn't need to actually, would they? They wouldn't need to get that mirror down and use it. I'm being silly there because in here you've got this tabletop and, you know, marble top, haven't you, and stuff like that. You've got this table. Um, there's a big mirror there. But, you know, I was saying, could someone have pulled the mirror down and walloped it down there and been like, right, get on with the cocaine, and then failed to clean the mirror properly? It just seems weird the mirror is so badly cleaned um, for a job like this. Where, I mean, someone's obviously hastily cleaned that and done a really bad job, but what was it making it so dirty in the downstairs toilet? Nothing much, probably, and probably quite innocent. Um... I'm back now, aren't I? Yeah. You're all watching me still, aren't you? Yeah. Um, so we come through here in the morning anyway. So Nikki's got up in the morning. The kids have got up. They've done their teeth and whatever. You come down here. It's breakfast time. Paul said it's usually chaos, but this time it was all neat and tidy. Like What he means by that is chaos is there's cereal bowls or my homework's out on the desk or you know there's things out around here, a shoe, a, a school bag, and you know 
they haven't eaten this and they haven't got that and stuff like that. But this time it's not that. Nicola had everything all in prepared and like clean, neat and tidy. So at this point, Paul comes down the stairs like and, and enters into the frame. The family are in this room here. Like Nicola is occupying either this space or she's out here. Um, where I suggest again, uh, I don't know what that stuff is there. Again, it's organisational stuff. Um, it's little leaflets, um, memos maybe from school, uh, things that you get posted through the door, like and stuff like that. Um, washing up liquid is. This is a functional sink, and someone is actually using it. Look, um, the dog. I'm not going to. Am I going to look too closely at the calendar? I mean, I'm assuming they're not going to put a load of personal shit on the calendar, are they? But um, you know, it's a functional space. This is. And it includes these sets of keys. So this is the room that you come in and out of, isn't it? And as you come in, you put your keys on there. And there are your keys. And that's a thermostat there, isn't it? So that other thing might have been an alarm. Um, glow bracelets. I did spot that. They were glowing things. Weird. It's not silly string. It's glowing things. And my guess is that when the dog goes out for a walk, they put a disposable glow bracelet on the dog. Or it's for the kids. But it's a functional item in this functional room. Oh, it's not a party room and some party stuff that we just got kicking around, like I thought maybe. It's it's a functional item in this functional room. And you've still got all Nicola's uh, sunglasses there in that. That's what that's for. It's Nicola's sunglasses and stuff. Um, which does interest me. Okay. Okay, so who lives in a house like this? The glow bracelets thing, is it for the children and it's a bit of fun? Or is it that Nicola would walk the dog routinely in the evening? And whilst it's a bit of a not very environmentally friendly thing to do, has got these glow bracelets as convenient ways to illuminate the dog when you're out on an evening walk. Halloween, good shout. Halloween, very good shout. Thanks, Nick Willie Deeg in, in chat there and uh, Star Rays and yeah, Bonfire Night. Good shout. Keeping the kids safe with that. Maybe it's got nothing to do with Nicola. But it's weird that they're there. Like, as a sort of. To me, what this room says is I use it every day. I need to pin the things up from the school and like, this is a memo. We need to keep that. You know, this is happening on Friday, whatever. This actually says pictures for mummy at the top there, which is, again, don't make me sad. Um, but we've got an NHS teaching hospitals thing, hospitals, that you know, appointments, um, the calendar, you know, the use of the functional dog bowl. This is where probably under here you've got cleaning products for the washing machine and dog food and dog treats in here. But my also my other guess is that when you get children ready for school in the morning, one of the um, things that you have to do is you have to pack their little bag and... Um, in here, you would probably put their sandwiches or their, their snacks together. Maybe this table gets used as, you know, a school table. I don't think it does, though. Maybe this. You know, you've got them both sat up there having their, their morning foods. And at the same time, you're a busy parent and you're trying to get their shit together. So you're packing their little school bags. And you're not running in and out the front door because we've established, at least for my feeling, that this is not... This is where guests come in the house. And this is kept nice and it's got this little table and that's not where you put your school bags. And they could be in this little cloakroom, which we don't get to see in, um, which has also got a little thing on it, like an alarm thing. Seems like we've got two of those alarm things. Um, little cloakroom that we don't get to see. Um, but my guess is this is not like, although the kids come running down here and through here, it doesn't look really like cluttered and lived in and, you know, you haven't got all your shoe piles there and stuff it feels more to me like they come through into the kitchen and then this is the living space where these things are happening this chaos is happening as described by paul ansell um and so the the packing of the school bags and the like you know the final check before you go off to school and get the dog and all this business happens in this room doesn't it certainly the dog does and certainly when they come in from school things that need to be stuck on the pin board and put in the calendar are getting put in the calendar first like like Nicola's routine would involve coming into this room, assuming that she 
routinely comes in and out of this door, okay, would involve coming into this room, popping the keys down there, um, che you know, checking off on the calendar whatever they've brought home from school today and whatever they've, you know, stuff like that on the calendar. Like today, I've just been told at school that they, you know, they're in the car telling me this thing and that's gone on the pin board. And okay, and I wash your hands. Probably I'd say to them, <laughs> maybe. Um, and uh, take off your shoes right, and then into the house yeah sit down there and have you put on Peppa Pig or whatever the fuck it is that you have to put on these days on the telly's uh, and uh, I'm going to do your tea you know that's what that feels like to me might be wrong um, so in the chaos of the morning that was normally chaos but wasn't in this particular morning when Nicola um, last left with the children Paul Ansel comes down here Nicola exits stage left we're saying she comes out in the garden through this door I mean it makes sense doesn't it but in almost I, I don't know if this makes sense to you or not whether um, there's uh, <sighs> like using this side door as a regular routine thing it looks like it's got something stapled on it here, like a bit of blue. Like maybe that's so that you can easily pull it and attach it to hit this hook. Uh, so it looks like it is in use. But it's like got a bolt on it and it's possible you could get bolted out. Um, you know, it's not the most secure entrance to your house and nor is necessarily this the most routinely functional entrance to your house. It hasn't got a proper step there. And it would think I would feel like this is the sort of thing that if you run in and out with kids all the time, that they end up cracking that step and muddy prints and stuff. I don't, I just don't know which is the most routine obvious, but I'm supposing this, because she comes out through this door, doesn't she? And this side entrance, we don't see it. Um, in this image, we see it here, like this corner the CCTV which was cut off from the actual main CCTV that they showed but this is that side entrance isn't it and she's exiting here with the dog and then she's got to walk all the way up the drive as I said like the drive is long and um, serves no purpose to have your cars parked right at the front like that like, oh, that's bugged me the whole time like why are you parking your cars like that who's doing that you both have reversed in Okay, one of you might not want to hit the bins. You might not want to reverse all the way back up and hit the, the property. But you're going in the back door and in and out the back door. So it's far more natural to reverse all the way to the back door and then get out and go, like, why do you want to walk the extra steps? You can't be using the garage functionally. So it would make more sense that you reverse back. You can even fit another car on then. You don't know if anyone's going to come round. You're not trying to fit cars on. But I... Most people use the side gate if they have a drive at the side of the house. Good shout, yeah, the drive's here, so maybe the side gate's the, the way. Um, but they park the cars as if they're going in the front door. And I'm not saying they do use the front door, I'm saying they probably use the side door. Um, but it's a weird contrivance, the way they park the cars. And so here you see Nicola Bully coming in at the side, you know, coming in and out the side. You don't see ever, like, the full CCTV of this, but like, I'm assuming, like, she closes the gate or doesn't because Paul's going to go back in. Like, she doesn't have to lock up. She just leaves. Like, she doesn't have to consider locking up. Um, the CCTV is a massive problem, isn't it? But uh, going back to the um, the property. Nicola Bully leaves. Whoops. How have we got here? Nicola Bully leaves. And Paul's up and awake at this point, yeah? And he says that then what he does is he goes back to his office and does some work, doesn't he? So he's here in this part of the house. The telly's been on. He probably wants to get some tea, you know, eat the breakfast. I don't think he's going to be interested in tidying up the mess from breakfast or anything, is he? Like, so does he go out himself? Like, he's already been out in his dressing gown, pictured on the driveway, I'm not saying that that's a legit piece of CCTV, but like to his story and everything, he's been out on the driveway doing the things with the car and the dog, like even though the things don't add up in the story in the CCTV. That's what he said. Like, does he then go in here and sit down here? 
turn the big telly on in here have a sit down does he ever sleep on this sofa um you know is this his natural space that he wants to come and occupy or is it like ignore that get back in the house um because i'm off like how do i explain this like this is a day daytime environment room this is a uh a bright space you've got up it's the morning you're in the world yeah like you're, you're part of it and Paul then goes through the house back upstairs almost like you're going back to bed back towards his bedroom into the little office and you might get a nice bit of daylight through this window but it feels like you're coming into this small room trapping yourself away and I personally would rather have my laptop out downstairs or in my other big room with those big sliding doors um, and work down there maybe, you know, in the kitchen or those other spaces. But maybe he needs to be here and he's plugged in here. So big ups Camilla Parks. Um, so what we've got going on now is that uh, Paul is at this space doing his work and he decides to go and change into his gym kit. Doesn't he? That happens organically. So he comes out of his bed, sorry, out of his bedroom there, assuming into this bedroom next door. Just in here. And gets into his gym kit. Changed. And it's an interesting one. She says get changed, but um He didn't appear to be dressed in the first place. So did he get dressed like a normal person does and then get changed? Or did he mean changed out of my dressing gown into my gym kit there's so many you know we're not picking that all apart right now but what we're saying is he's come into here like this is paul's bathroom isn't it like the kids are in that other bathroom in the morning like my guess is that you want daddy's needs to have a shower and a like you know not to be crude but you know use the, the toilet and daddy's going to sit on the toilet and read the newspaper and mommy doesn't want to smell that so like um and everyone's already got up anyway haven't they and you know gone and used the other bathroom he's getting up later so this is Paul's sort of it's even got grey tiles and you know a bit more generic it just feels like this is a bit more sparse and a bit more masculine um, so like I'm saying Paul uses this in the morning gets his gym kit on like, does he have a shower before he puts the gym kit on I don't know but he's got his gym kit on and then either he's in here working or something and he gets the call doesn't he? He sends the text. Where are you? You're late. And he, he thinks he, he gets a call and he might go out and look for her on the way. He might go to the gym so he's got his gym kit on. So he leaves here. He heads downstairs. Again, it's almost very... There's so much strange parallels in this journey around the house as with the Chris Watts one. Is does he does nobody use this front door then so we're just going to leave it like do I, I don't need to mess with the alarms um i don't usually use the alarms maybe you know maybe they're there I've, i don't know like if you've got a house with all this alarm stuff on maybe you're not messing with it as a day-to-day -day occurrence maybe when you're nipping in and out you don't use it um but are you in and out of this front door are you securing the house in this way and if you are slash are not like if you leave a key in the door like that can anyone else get in the front door um, usually if there's a key in the lock someone else can't get into it uh, like maybe it's just not common to use the front door but I'm, I'm assuming you're in a rush because like you know this time you might want to leave but your car's not around there anyway I suppose so you leave through here through here you follow the same path as Nicola you come out through here and it's grab the keys off here <coughs> excuse me grab the keys off here And it's out through here. So again, your security on your house is you lock up this. You obviously want to lock this gate up, but you can't lock it up because you're going to come back through it. See, that's a funny thing to me about security and home security. I don't know if that's another lock on it or not or anything, but you've got a simple latch and a deadlock. And you can't deadlock it from the other side if you're out because you're going to come back through it. So... Uh, this remains unlocked essentially it's not a big thing as part of the case but it just is what's supposed to have happened and then you're out on the drive and you're off and you're away and that's paul's journey in the morning
and then there's only one of the sort of you know story to play out here that we kind of want to look at which is and i don't want to ju like i've done such a lot tonight now and i don't want to spend too much time on it but i think i might as well just do it now while i'm here um is the mental health support team and the ambulance and stuff uh they are going to arrive they're going to arrive show me exterior please they're going to arrive front of house exterior and this handy bit that they can pull into further along they're going to pull into further along if they can they might pull onto the drive but they might not be sure of whose drive is whose but this space here is ambulance space outside the front of your house isn't it so this is where the police and the ambulance turn up and all of your neighbors are like what the fuck's going on at the end of the road there's all the police and the ambulance are there like they go and knock at your front door and you're not going to be around the side saying come around the side we always use the side and can you tell the other people to do that as well you're probably going to have to have this front door open and, and functional aren't you when the police and the ambulance come are you my guess uh maybe they use this space and you're encouraging them through this side you know maybe that is happening but um you're going to have two to three different people coming and arriving at different times and they're naturally going to go to the front door and knock on the front door and you're going to be busy in the house with the other people like, unless the police the ambulance and the uh, mental health support people all arrive at bang the same time you know i just feel like they're going to maybe one arrives later somebody uses the front door um so with that uh i'm going to say we're here at the front door you know you've been having these problems nicola's gone upstairs and he's therefore up and out the way in this back bedroom. Conversations are being had about her welfare. Is it this lounge? You know, I'm, I'm not going into that report now and detailing that now um, and telling that story as eloquently here. But, you know, whatever happened that caused them to come round, whatever arguments were being had, um, it's either in this room, isn't it? or it's in the kitchen and then the emergency services and people are coming through here um and basically it's like it's interesting to me when you talk about this and look at it this way like the children are not able to be out of the way here like i understand from what i can remember that nicola was upstairs um, was there a loft space good question yes above the hatch above my head here there is a loft space um I don't know how easy it is accessible. Most people's lofts are accessible. Because otherwise, you know, what the fuck are they doing? But there is a loft space, yeah, but I can't go and look at it. Um, it's not been boarded out and, you know, done as a lot. It's just storage, I'm thinking. Uh, but, like, the emergency services and the people that are coming up and down here, aren't they? Like, I wonder if the children were in their bedrooms in here. Like, that's an issue for me. Like, the way that the floor plan of the house means that, like, you can't sort of avoid going past and causing disturbance to the children if you're in this upper bedroom um, and the emergency service is going up to you and talking to you and where would the children be kept safely apart in another way, whether they were taken out of the house or not, whether they went in here or to play in the... Um, the... You know, the, the man cave... Or is there a playroom downstairs? Is one of the because there was a little playroom, wasn't there? Um, that's down here, the playroom downstairs. So maybe you know they were put in the playroom for a bit. But it's hard for them to be out the way of the turbulence of whatever was happening on the night of that um, that check, unless of course they're in their bedrooms, effectively asleep. But. Uh, you know can you imagine two children staying in the bedrooms and just you know being asleep during all that i don't know and without looking into that too much more deeply of which i will do and will re remind myself of the exact movements as described um big ups floyd do i think there's a possible black room no i assuming that making a joke there about you know a certain idiot on uh or not on youtube anymore um no i was I, no um yeah 
the emergency services, you know, you can imagine them coming through to here and, you know, adults talking in this room. But as far as I can understand, Nicola was in the bedroom upstairs and didn't want to go to the hospital. So, you know, that does require the mental health professional to... And I believe that there was quite a few people in the room at the one time. And this is just me saying without confirming it on the reports and everything, but I believe there were quite a few people in the room at the same time here having a conversation with Nicola. And at some point somebody said, look, just the mental health person, everybody else out. So at that point, you know, these children are going to be quite disturbed by this whole going on. And adults have got to go down here, either into this lounge to have a chat. But most likely, isn't it? It's the flow of the house is it's all through to here where conversations about welfare would have been had. Maybe cups of tea would have been made. Things been tidied up. I don't know. You know, maybe this was the scene of what got out of hand for them to call them in the first place. Certainly you've got the hot tub here for a bit of, uh, you know, evening party adult open out onto the, the deck and sit on the hot tub. Uh, you know, it looks like a nice life, doesn't it? It looks like a lot of fun, maybe. Um, I don't know. But they're my thoughts anyway. I just wanted to give my instinctive thoughts on looking through it. Um, and so that's my instinctive thoughts on looking through it. I think maybe a bit more could be done to try and put together the scene of the healthcare check. But I've done a bit of that here. And I've done a bit of the, the morning of. And we've looked extensively at all the different rooms and if there's anything particular that stands out. I mean, I do see these trio of mirrors here as well, look. So I see that as being a Nicola Bully interior design choice so maybe those three mirrors in Paul's office were an interior design choice of Nicholas that is coherent throughout the space of the house that then ended up just like you know ended up just being part of that room that Paul has turned into a bit of a mess um, and she's done a really good job I'm assuming again it's all you know Nicholas touch there that like you've got that lovely mirror there and it matches the one that's in the downstairs bathroom. The oak is consistent. Like she's done a really lovely job of furnishing the place and it looks great, doesn't it? Um, may she rest in peace. Uh, and the other thing that really stood out to me with massive, you know, massive standout for me is that Paul's got his own man cave space that is well decked out. Probably the biggest teddy in the whole of the, uh, that's got an, an attic as well. Um, man cave space, well decked out, and uh, heated. Like I, I just feel like Paul spent this like spends his time here more than he does. Like, if he's going to go and spend some Paul time, he's going to spend it here, isn't he? Um, that's what it's for and stuff. You know, I didn't see this aspect of it before. Uh, there is still some in bringing in of the family into this space, but um, I am a bit. A couple of things I'm, you know, going to stutter step on is the attic space is here as well, and I did wonder, do wonder. You know, that's a let's just say that's a storage option. The staying in, so you know, have we got the COVID times? Have we got? I shouldn't say the word; it's going to fuck up the thing again. But have we got, you know, are we talking about those times where people had to stay in, spent a lot of time in this space? Maybe the family were, you know, in and out of it a bit more back then. Um, and it's nice to be able to bring the outside in and to have these big doors open and to, like, you know, I would like this space as well. It looks like a nice space. So um, I can perceive Paul spending time there. Um, the guide price is quite cheap. Paul's got his own space. Oh, yeah, and I want to just think about this a little bit as well. The one clue we all missed. Over here, we've got a pile of sunglasses. So Nicola obviously had multiple pairs of sunglasses. So we cannot in any way corroborate which pair of sunglasses she would normally have or should have or whatever. But there is... A, well, we can, or some people might. You know, they might go back over her pictures and look at which pairs of sunglasses she was seen to wear and whether there is any way to really say and suggest because it just is a little thing that you might forget if you were putting together a bit of fake CCTV or like, you know, if Nicola was being described. Um, uh, like, I know it's not very sunny in this image, but when you go dog walking, it 
it's bright. If you're consistently following a routine and like you know in this image she's not wearing sunglasses in the image in the corner in the image where she gets in the car she has things in her hand maybe people question like there's a bottle of water um the description of her that was put out and stuff doesn't mention sunglasses it's never been a, a theme of this investigation but what I've just learned by looking at these pictures is that Nicola Bully had several pairs of sunglasses and they're right there by the keys and it's like a, a regular item that she's, you know, utilising and, okay, it's winter, she might not be wearing sunglasses, you know, might be being silly, but if I'm dog walking and I'm doing it routinely and regularly and I regularly need my sunglasses because it's bright out on the walk even if it's winter, it might just be something that I pick up and put in my pocket or, you know, routinely have. A lot of people, other people would have to tell me, you know, what they think of routine use of sunglasses, driving, you know, whether you'd have them in the car for driving, whether they were left in the car. But it's an item that hasn't been discussed. And there it is, you know, front and centre here. As you leave the house, grab my keys, get my sunglasses. And they're not all Paul's sunglasses, are they? They're mainly Nicola's, from what I can see there. Um, quite a few sets of keys as well. Two cars, spare set, a set for all the different housey things. So someone's car, Route 66, bit of a choice. Uh, I don't know about that next set. The one with the unicorn, I don't know. And then there's car keys. That's probably spare keys, isn't it? And I understand Nicola's car is probably sold by now, so maybe that was Nicola's keys and it's without the car fob. And um, that's all the stuff for the house, like, you know, the fuse boxes and this and that. And then there's another set of keys with like a little fob on it. There's like an extra set of keys. Maybe that's because you've got the, the man cave and it's got its own set of keys or something, but maybe that's spare keys. But it seems like there's an extra set of keys. Um, and maybe you need them, you know, maybe it's an extra set of keys. Pretty picture of a cow. I and mean, this has been a bit of an insight, hasn't it? But it's been a contrived insight because, of course, um, you know, the people who took these photographs knew that they'd be viewed on the internet through this prism. So they knew that people would sort of go through it with a bit of a fine tooth comb. And I doubt very much that there's either going to be um, extremely insightful evidence or uh, you know a damning piece of clue or something um, I doubt it very much there's a blue football in the garden someone likes football uh, so I, whilst I doubt that I do think there are some things that we can learn and view and think about so it just is what it is I certainly don't want to make it the um, Nicola Bully House tour million views on the internet please look at me I'm the first on the scene to get this bit of juicy gossip thing uh, it is really sad, isn't it, Camilla? It is really sad. I had my sad moment earlier, and I have done throughout the entirety of this case, like whether I do it on screen or not. Um, Freud asked a difficult question earlier, and I don't know about that. And listen, could be Emma's touch, though. That's a very good shout. You know, if someone's going to be here snazzing up the place, there's a couple of things that scream Emma, um, one of which is this gin. That's very Emma. I mean, it might be, you know, just might just be a, you know, might, I, I assume Emma also liked Oasis, being just from the part of the world she's from and the age she's at. I don't know. Right, maybe there's that, but that gin bar is is a very Emma thing. Um, but they all like the gin, apparently it seems. And then uh, there was another. It was in the room with the flowers, and like. There's, for Nicola, there's a theme here of orchids. There's an orchid there. There was an orchid in the bedroom. Orchids. Family. So my guess is that Nicola's favourite flower was the orchid. Uh, but in that interview with Paul Ansel, and in this room, there are these white... Are they, they're tulips, aren't they? And there were white roses with... Was it tulips as well? They feel to me to be much more Emma, like much more wedding venue much more marsh farm and it might just be a feeling and 
and oh, oh, I don't like it. I don't like it now. Oh. So the other day, and it's only been recorded as part of a thing that I spoke to a group of people that were like here on stream, but I did talk about it and you know that I talked about this, is that I had a dream and I described my dream and about this space, this hallway space, it was like an interior room, um, like I was like in this, uh, like there was this white, there was sorry, there was this fireplace and it was an old electric fireplace that looked like my my nans used to have this gas fire that you go clink 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 and it comes on and it goes on fire um like an old electric fireplace and underneath it was green tiles and on the green tiles was like a pile of burned charred charcoal i described it as um do you remember that do you remember i described that like can you tell me in chat if you remember me describing my dream please so that i know that somebody knows what i'm talking about yeah okay so here is a fireplace i didn't clock it did i i didn't know i'm not making this shit up i don't like you know this is where with trisha and the cards and stuff like no i'm not making this shit up yeah so here is a room and the color scheme is actually i didn't realize a sort of muted green as well as the gold there's like a green tone to it very similar to the tiles that i was describing in my dream um and it looks kind of like like now I'm thinking about it, this background wallpaper, it's just got something of like aged to it in a way. Can't quite describe how, but it's kind of like a similar feeling. It's not the right tiles. It's not the same tiles as in my dream. And there's no cat. And it is a more through fair space. There's the doors at the back. This wasn't in my dream, but the word, you know, I described it as a room that you can go through like a corridor almost. At the back, there was like a doors out. And in my room, it was empty of things. Um... We'll talk about this cityscape in a minute. That's different, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but uh, just basically in my dream, there was the fireplace, electric fireplace. This would be like that, isn't it? That's an electric fire, isn't it? And it's got all the burned sticks in the pile that look like charcoal. So that's out of my dream. Like, if it was to perfectly line up, there would be a green tiled floor here, underneath it. And it would be a, an older fire, like a 1970s or 80s fire. But maybe it was once a 90s. No, it wasn't, because this is a much more new build. But it's an electric fire. Like my, You know, the symbolism in my mind is the electric fire. That's what I was saying about the thing that you click, 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 and it might be gas or it might be electric or whatever. Um, this is that sort of arrangement, isn't it? That's that sort of fire. And the, the pile of charcoal was very distinctive. And it's not the same look as in my dream. There was much more of it, and it was much more broken and a pile of this charcoal. But that, to me, is like a pile of charcoal and an electric fire. So for me to have called it in my dream a few days ago and to say, I think I've had a symbolism dream about Nicola Bully, and then to see it there like that, that speaks to me in that way. Um, I'm looking around to see if I can see the green tiles or the cat. I mean, there's a pet bed in there. Look, there's a pet bed next to it. So whilst there's no cat, there is a pet bed right next to it. And what's the green tiles? Like It was like, you know, like a fireplace hearth made out of green tiles that the cat was sort of sitting on and then with the charcoal. Um, I don't know, yeah. Yeah, Paul's selling the house, yeah. So yeah, now I've had my little, you know, moment there with that. That's fuck, fucked with my head a bit. I'm still on the lookout for the green tiles and the cat, but I think there's two pieces of clear symbolism that I described for my dreams. Three now with the pet bed, I suppose. Um, and four with the sort of... Like this room is exactly the right sort of shape as in my dream. Uh, it had a door out the front door about there, and there wasn't a door there, and it went through to a sort of back door and a space out the back that way in my dream but it was very much like a, a narrow room that felt like a corridor that this is like and it was completely unfurnished in my dream and it had sort of more wooden floors more sort of uh oaky wood floors we've got this which is the the shrine um you know or maybe the green tiles are supposed to tell me something else about something else that's connected 
you know, so maybe I'll look out for them as well. But, uh, you know, I think that was a pretty <sighs> funny thing to end it on. And um, like, I'm not going to stop streaming right now, obviously, so don't go anywhere. But for YouTube, for the video that I intend to make about this, the only thing I'm concerned about leaving in is the talk of the child and the stuff up in that room, which I think is a bit sensitive and looking in the children's bedrooms so I have to decide in my own brain whether I just cut that bit out but the problem is is it is part of the story and we can't cut out the bit with the um like we can cut out the going in the child's room but the bit about the the camera monitoring the child like that has to stay in and I don't want to have to sit and listen to two hours of me talking to make decisions about it and edit it but I suppose I have to yeah, it's a yellow ribbon, Camilla, yeah, at the top of the banister. Yellow ribbon has been tied, plaited, pleated, in American words, but it's been plaited. So that's not Paul Ansel that's doing that and plaiting it. That's the young girls that live in the house, is my guess. Maybe someone's tried to undo this. It looks like it has been undone slightly at this end. Uh, and there's a hairband or something around that as well, like a, um, a, a purple band as well that someone's put around there. Uh, and again here, knotted and plaited. I mean, it might be something I said earlier that when you miss mummy or in the morning, put another knot in it for mummy and think of mummy, or it might have been something that I put on there during the, the missing part of the face and has never come off and it's hard to remove like mentally as well as physically, or it might be simply that the estate agent said, put that on there because uh, it's going to help to sell the house and create a funny vibe or something. I don't know, but um, it is on there. And it looks frayed. And it looks like it's been there since the investigation. You know, since you went missing to me, is my guess. But as an estate agent, you'd find it really hard to say to them, can you remove that for these photographs, wouldn't you? And it's like, it looks like someone might have started to unknot this, and then they've thought better of it. And thought, hang on, isn't this quite symbolic? And if the kids come back and I've unknotted it and removed it, am I going to get in trouble here? Maybe I'll just leave it on. You know, maybe they even had a phone call about it and a think about it. I, if I was the estate agent, I would have a big think about leaving that on because you know the connotations, you know what's going on and you know what people are going to look at and say on the internet. But there we are looking at it and saying it in, on the internet. Um... Yeah, they wouldn't leave them on the bedroom drawers and put them in pictures in this... Uh, I don't know, yeah. The city image. Yeah, let's go back to that quickly, briefly, because I just wanted to say something about that uh, before I finish, because this is nearly it for YouTube video, I think. Um, it reminds me of True Detective off... Uh, oh, it reminds me of HBO's True Detective, and there's another YouTuber whom I respect called true crime rocket science and true crime rocket science has used an image from hbo's true detective as part of their logo and part of their image on their um on their avatar so it's quite a popular imagery this isn't the actual hbo imagery this is something else done in ink on paper like as a bit of artwork and art print it could depict an actual city and it might be that they visited the place together and bought this and put it in the house. But of all the items in this room, which we have said is Nikki's room, like Nicola has furnished this room, black is a feature. It's picked out on these cushions. Okay? The television's going to be a big black item on the wall. Like Nicola's aware of it. It's picked out on these cushions. But does Nicola look like... It's Paul that goes in for the big black picture frames with the stuff on like that. Like he's got up in his office. Nicola tends to go for something slightly different. And I don't know if she would choose that as the statement piece on the wall there. Unless it has some sort of like familiarity and meaning to her. Maybe it's London. Because, you know, she's from that area of the world. Um, 
so maybe it's a Nicola thing. You know, people have their opinions and tell me what they think of that. Maybe, you know, I'll leave that to other people. Um, but it could be that there was previously something on the wall here that Paul doesn't want to have on the wall anymore and has changed. And it could be that there's some sort of subconscious symbolism of the true detective. It could be a statement piece about that. I would doubt it, but it could be a sneer to the detectives. Because true detective, you know, you'd have to be, first of all, you'd have to have watched true detective to get that. And then second of all, you would have to be a bit fucking weird and, and do it. So I don't think that's it. <laughs> um, my guess is really that it was bought as a memento of a city that they've... Like, I think it might be London. I'm not smart enough to recognise the skyline. I mean, it could be fucking Blackpool for all I know. It's not. But maybe it's a memento of that and it just looks pretty and it's gone on the wall. Um, but I do have this wondering feeling that there was something else there previously and Paul has replaced it. And this is Paul's choice rather than Nicola's. That's a guess, but not a, you know, that's not a fact. It's less than a fact. It's like a 50-50 guess. Because it opposite, like if you're doing the room, if you're a proper design, like Nicola seems to have got her eye on the design here. And Paul's supposed to be the one that does graphics and graphic design on the computer, but um, Nicola seems to be the one with the taste. And I would say that understanding that you've got this great big panel of black on the wall, the TV, which you're going to want, um, is being set off amongst your colour scheme of golds, oaks, burnished greens, and uh, is being set off with the black. And it's been picked out with the charcoal in the fire as well. You know, it's like a design choice to have that statement, that inky black, in a way. Quite an interesting one as well, because there's such a lot of purity. And, like, my mum wouldn't have had that on the wall next to her cream carpets, because even though it's not really going to stain the carpets, just the concept of it looking messy... <laughs> and looking like ink near her cream carpets would have made her feel uneasy so um i don't think it suits and it fits with nicola's personality to have that on the wall or maybe it does and i don't know nicola's personality enough you know maybe she's a bit of a go-getter city trader um cd underworld la noir uh true crime detective I, I don't know you know maybe that's something that really speaks to her um but it's an interesting choice isn't it It could have been a family photo that's been replaced. In the main, they've blurred them out when there's been photographs of the family. Like over here, they've just left them in. Paul has deliberately left them there, knowing that they would be photographed, and the estate agent has decided to blur them out. I mean, it's a choice, isn't it? Because Paul might think, I don't want my children to be photographed. And they might have said, don't worry, we'll just blur them out. Or he might have run around and put the photographs out, or he might have took them away, or anything, you know, you don't know. I, um, I certainly don't, but we've got the shrine down here as well, it's got some green behind it. I don't know what that is, but there's a green thing with a red dot behind it, behind the Nicola Buddy um, photograph there. And it says family beneath it, that does, family, is what it actually says. Very interesting walk through the house there and to set it off with my dream coming back to haunt me at the end like that. Um, and whilst it's not exactly what I saw in my dream, there's too many close sim symbolisms for me to, to, you know, ignore that. The charcoal, the fireplace, the fact that it was an electric fire specifically and in my brain I hadn't you know, I've seen an elect well, I, at my nan's house, I think it was a gas fire, but I think it used to be an electric fire, and then she had a gas fire fitted. And as a kid, I wasn't like aware of whether it was electric or gas. I just knew it as the the one you turn on by going click, 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 and it comes into life, and it's not a normal fire, and you can't burn yourself, but it's a fire. You know, um, so my nan had a similar but less modern style of fire, um, and so it all symbolically, symbolically sits right in place and then with the pet bed as well i had a sleeping cat in my dream a very content sleeping omar my old cat um there's a pet bed there so there's another piece of the symbology the only thing that's missing and like i said you've got the, the room and the shape and everything the only thing that's really missing is the um green tile the green tile i mean you can see the the t exterior tiles from here but that's a reach there's the orchid again. There's another orchid. 
And a big candle there. You know, more shrine-like behaviour. Which I suppose actually is okay for like... Like in terms of Paul Ansel exhibiting this behaviour of like creating shrines for his dead wife. That's actually okay in terms of like grieving and being uh, legitimately grieving. It doesn't prove innocence or guilt in any way. It just is legitimate grief. Um, and it reminds me of the Madeleine McCann case where Kate had effectively created a shrine for Madeleine on a bedside table. Um, having not been sure that she was dead, of course. But yeah... Okay, YouTube, you be good, and if you can't be good, you're naughty. All right, I'm going to cut that for YouTube there. That can go to you. There will be other people who have things to say about choices in this image. For example, the choice of John Lydon's book, I Could Be Wrong, I Could Be Right, to be prominent for those internet sleuths. Whether it's even a book or, you know, storage for something else. There's a book here by somebody called uh, Mark Manson, and it's something art of something. You know, it might tell us an insight into who lives in a house like this, or it might be that someone's gone out and bought this to put it in the frame to make you think who lives in a house like this, or it might be that uh, it's a gift that someone just gave him and he put it there. You, you know, you don't know, do you? you just don't know. It's hard to know. One thing you do know is that Paul knew these images would end up on the internet and people would look through them like this. So whilst I think he's a slovenly mess and he can't help but, you know, have things out, why would you not put those bills in the drawer? Why would you leave this standard life thing? Because that's insurance. That's like, that's going to perk up the, the ears. Insurance? It was an insurance scam. They killed her for the money. You know, that's going to be... And there was an NHS one as well, wasn't there, on the pin board downstairs, which I didn't look too more deeply into. But that's going to perk ears and cause conversations. All this stuff, you know. Um, there's a narrative that we should try and shut down the social media conversation. There's a narrative that the police should have control of the narrative. There's a narrative that because of what... And I don't want to start talking about this today now, but because of what certain people did or didn't do during the search, that uh, she definitely was or wasn't here or there, you know. And there are narratives that support and don't support the inquest results. And the inquest would like you to believe that she definitely was in the water and she definitely fell in. And it was definitely an accident, and she was definitely there the whole time. That's what the inquest wants you to believe. And they know that there's this internet thing that goes on with all these people talking and they want control of that narrative. And they know that they don't have control of it and it just goes on. So maybe they attempt to control it by putting things in pictures and posting them on the internet. And if I was the um, estate agent for this particular case, this particular job, I'd probably say, look, this is a famous property because recently Nicola Bully died and this is the house that the family lived in. So I'm not going to give you the full extensive inside outside. Here are a couple of photographs. <laughs> the virtual tour is not on today, I'm afraid. If you want to buy the house and you're serious, contact us. But because of the sensitive nature of the events of her death and life, I'm not going to be putting extensive, invasive pictures of their life on the internet. Like you could have said that, couldn't you? And people wouldn't have been angry with it. And you might still have done well and sold the house because okay they haven't seen inside every room but for the guide price and with a general idea they can get an idea and they can go and visit the, the house they, they, I don't think you needed to give every nook cranny shrine and corner the internet airtime so I think it was either a mistake by the people at right move or whichever um, estate agent are in charge of this deal um, I think that was possibly a mistake and I'm not making a mistake by covering it on the internet. But we would be making a mistake if we jump to any conclusions from the images that we see here. Because as much as they can be revealing, they can also be misleading. Because none of this has to be anything. Like Paul doesn't have to have seen any of this in his life ever. He could have got Emma or any... No, I'm not saying Emma, no, you know, to be contrarian here. I just mean he could have got an interior designer in to say, make it look like a, a working office, please. Uh, I'm going to take a photo of it tomorrow. So, And they've said, do you want one of those CAD designer things? And he's gone, yeah, put one of them in. 
you know, I don't know. I'm assuming not. I'm assuming this is actually his actual desk, but um, it would seem an, an extreme naivety of Paul Lancelot to, unless he thinks he's got away with it, he doesn't care, or, or he's not involved and he's innocent and he doesn't care. But to have personal details like bills on display or insurance documents, okay, I can't read the address from here and the exact information, but to not put this in a drawer. Um, and from what I can see at the top there, it looks like it might say conservatives or congratulations or something. And it looks like it's got an official insignia. And that might be a letter from the Conservative Party. I've seen letters from the Conservative Party that have the word conservatives at the top and a little insignia. Don't quote me on that. Make up your own mind. Have a look at your own pic, you know. But anything that might turn into an incrimination or like any of these things that we're seeing on the screen in Paul's office has the opportunity to become an internet rabbit hole you know and the internet sleuths make lots of videos about it and that's what they don't want nobody in control of this narrative at their end paul the, the police the media none of them want people like me or you or anyone else to look at these images and come and come up with ideas and stories so it seems weird that they would present them all on the internet like this for us all to have a good nosy who lives in a house like this? He used to work for BA Systems. He left before he had uh, peers who also worked there from the area and they got their jobs earlier and he left his earlier. But he did used to work for BA, BA Systems. Um, you know, there's loads of facts and information about this, but today's about looking around the house, I suppose, isn't it? You thought it would have been sold privately, exactly. It seems to me as well, like, we'll discuss this quickly as well and stick it on the end of the YouTube video, which I've said multiple times now is the end, but, like, that amount of money is... I don't know about the area and I don't know about the going rates and all that, but that seems quite cheap for a house of this size and with all the mod cons. They haven't got a, an induction hob. They've got a normal gas cooker, but, you know, otherwise it's pretty nicely done out. Um... It's fairly new and you've got amenities nearby and all those good things. They've done out the man cave, so that adds value. You know, it just feels like an easy sale, this does. Who wouldn't want to live here for that money in today's market? Um, you know, maybe you're putting in an offer for 450. You know, maybe you start at 425 and see where you go with it. I mean, um, if I was looking to buy this, the first thing I'd say to them is, look, you obviously realise this is the house that's connected with a recent tragedy, so I'm going to come in at four hundred, at 399, and we'll start, like, it's 465, I'll come in at 399, I'm not even, in fact, fuck, I don't want to haggle them, I want 350, I'm going to come in at 350, and they'll say no, and then we'll start haggling, won't we? Like, there's no way I'm coming in at 465 anyway, but, you know, thanks very much, here's the money, but then somebody might, and then they might just sell it. Um, so two things about that with one. One is Paul needs fast money. Two is Paul is living beyond his means because it's an expensive thing to maintain a big house with heating bills and electricity if you're not using it all and you don't have two incomes. Um, three, and none of these are facts. These are just like, you know, things that could be inferred by the sale at this price. Um, could be that Paul doesn't want to stay there anymore, just hates it and just wants it gone. So he'll rather have a quick sale than mess about for a couple of hundred, you know, a couple of thousand pounds. Um, it could be that uh, the estate agent said, look, this has got a stigma attached to it, so we can't sell it for top dollar because people aren't going to want to move in there because it's the Nicola Bully house. Like, there could be all sorts of things, yeah. Um, a big upheaval for the children as well, bear in mind. Uh, all memories of living in that house with mommy and all that have to change, but maybe it's good for them mentally to have a change. I don't know, I'm not a psychologist on that aspect. Yeah, if you want to buy a house in Inskip, it comes with a bit of a story. And you've got 400 grand. I mean, obviously I don't have 400 grand, but I might be able to start whipping up a deposit and uh, asking about a mortgage, explaining to people that I get a lot of tippies on the internet. And if I keep asking for super chats, then... Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't do these jokes anymore because people are going to cut that and say, you do ask for super chats. 
I'm very grateful for all the tippies and all the super chats. I'm very grateful for all the support and I will never ask directly, please, can you give me money? That's ridiculous. But I'm very grateful for the community support and that does what fuels this stuff. It is. I'm not trying to um, pretend that I don't like money and that I'm not grateful. Of course, I'm really grateful. So, uh, But at the same time, like I said at the start of this thing, I can't do this as a YouTube episode, make a big toot 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 super chuffers here let's tear apart the nicola bully house it's going to be a great episode yes i'm back on top i don't feel like that at all uh in fact looking at this today has made me cry again and um you witnessed it you watched it i'm not being fake uh, i don't want to make my content about horror and tragedy exclusively and i find all this to be it's like an epilogue on a tale of <laughs> in the words of bart simpson it's a little epilogue in the tale of sadness but it is, isn't it? So there's still more to talk about and think about with the Nicola Bully case. Uh, simply because the inquest was a sham doesn't mean we're going to shut up and go away. But for a while there, I needed to take a break from it. And I don't know exactly how to push forward with it. But I do know there is still some information out there that needs to be shone the light of day. Brought, you know, writ large, as I've said a few times recently. So I'm going to stop saying that. And... Um, yeah, I know this is this what I've said. And all that what I just said again, I think I put it all on YouTube. I think I have to put it all on YouTube. I think I'm obligated to put it on YouTube with maybe a sort of sensitivity warning or something, you know, sensitive issues. You can click that on YouTube, so I will click that. Yeah. So once again for YouTube, I will say you be good. And if you can't be good, you're naughty. And cut for YouTube, and I will be able to edit it out if I want because I can on Twitch. I can edit little clips, I can edit a big clip and cut out a couple of bits. I can do simple things like that. So three hours forty six is my fucking YouTube video there. Uh, 